here in the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. With Gene and Chris, we're happy to welcome aboard our show. After lo these many years trying to get him on, we found the right circumstances, the right book, and the right time to welcome Whitley Strieber to the Paracast. Glad to talk to you. Well, I'm very glad to be on at last. It's been a while. I think it's a perfect time. And and this book kind of fits in some of the discussions we've been having, as Chris will explain as we proceed. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with a book called Eric Wellett's Illuminations. The Illuminations? Uh, it's called Illuminations by Eric Wellett from Anomalous Books. No, Chris, I don't know. Okay, Chris will tell you about it. I think it might be something you'll really want to read and like what you're doing here. Now, before we get on, obviously you've been associated with a number of genre movies and books over the years, and I'm a big sci-fi fan. You know, I watch almost everything on the sci-fi network. Yeah. I watch the comic book shows. You've got a TV show coming out called Hunters. Hunters, yeah. On Sci-Fi Channel. Tell our listeners about that. Well, Hunters is being produced by Gail Ann Hurd, who, of course, is famous for The Walking Dead, The Incredible Hulk, and any number of other ultra-high-end thingies, shows and movies. The showrunner, that is to say, the person who really created the series, this, who wrote the scripts and worked on the scripts and everything, is Natalie Chaidez, who also did 12 Monkeys for Sci-Fi. The show is, I think, quite amazing. I've seen the first seven or eight episodes. I went down to Melbourne a couple of weeks ago and watched the wrap of the show, the last week of production. And it's terribly exciting. It's based roughly, I would say, on my Alien Hunter series of novels. The premise being that alien criminals have come here to exploit human beings in high-tech ways that we can't even hardly begin to understand. Alien police have followed them and have teamed up with police here on Earth to track them down and catch them and prevent them from doing this. This is the basic theme. Natalie takes that theme, rewires it, pretzels it, and turns it into something really (laughs) remarkable. I would think that it's going to be a success. It's just uh, an absolutely intense and brilliantly, beautifully acted show. They got some top drawer talent in it. And it it is, uh, I'm excited. I think it's going to be really uh, a big success for sci-fi. I hope it is, because then it would be a big success for me too. And that would be very nice. It would indeed. Can you name some of the actors? Maybe we recognize them. Oh, yeah. The uh, Hunters, I think, uh, of course, uh, uh, Julian McMahon is in Hunters, and it's a, he does a terrific job uh, playing uh, a sort of unhinged version of my main character, who is also fairly unhinged, actually. And uh, he is uh, uh, really... A, a, extremely strong and he's going to be, I think he's going to be, uh, uh, I think it's going to be very exciting. Brittany Oldford. Brittany Oldford. Yeah. And Nathan Phillips. Okay. Let's just talk about them. Okay. So Julian McMahon is going to be in it and he plays uh, McCarthy, a sort of unhinged version of my hunter, my main hunter uh, in, in my books uh, Brittany Oldford is his is an is a very interesting take on a character in my books called Diana, and I'm not going to go into why she's so interesting. Just remember this: she will convince you without any makeup, without any rubber of any kind, more than anyone has ever on television that she is really an alien. It's an amazing acting job. And that almost sounds scary. <laughs> it is scary. It's wonderfully scary. She's, 
She's she's just very powerful. I mean, the whole show is amazing. It's a real breakthrough for sci-fi. I think. I hope. Yeah, I'm not a big sci-fi uh, channel fan, but this one is, is catching my attention really fast. Well, good. Keep catching. Everybody else, catch your attention too. Now, a large number of the Sci-Fi Channel shows are filmed in Canada, and let's be frank about it, it's save on production costs compared to the USA. But in this case, the team for Hunters, as you explained earlier, and maybe you can give us some more detail about it right now, went to Australia. It was filmed in Melbourne, and I'll tell you why. We had planned at first to film it here, but we needed Jungle forest, desert, and city, metropolitan area. And we, you know, it's a TV series, not a movie. So you're not going to travel the whole operation from place to place unless you absolutely have to. Right. It changes the whole budget picture dramatically. Melbourne is the one city which has a good, solid infrastructure of sound stages and skilled professionals to make the series that has all of those different types of location within driving distance. Yeah. So that's where we ended up. And it's also the birthplace of Australian cinema as well. Well, it is. It is absolutely. And and the the, the facilities available reflect that. Yeah. And it was it's a very cool place. And uh, we were, you know, it's an amazing place too because you can literally go from a forest to a tropical jungle in the same day there driving. Yeah. Or and, and most of the time when you're doing it, you're going through an incredible desert. It's wild. Well, if I ever begin to travel outside the United States, I think Australia is one of the places I would love to visit. Now you've really tempted me. Well, it, it, that kind of brings up the question in my mind is, is you know, y your effortless way of, of going from you know, fantasy and, and science fiction, fiction, uh, horror, and then having your own, you know, some would say even horrific experiences uh, in real life, um, obviously reflected in actually the, probably the start of the, <laughs> the, the real major cultural meme of the alien gray, of course, the, the iconic cover of communion. Do you find it difficult to be taken seriously in the nonfiction realm because you are so talented in the fiction realm? Or vice versa? <laughs> Not exactly. Uh, the the nonfiction is, it's interesting that I even got into that world. I think there are two reasons I got into it. The first one is that for all people say about them, and people love to be frightened, and they love to hate, especially to hate. Uh, I'm I'm coming from this at a kind of bad time in my life because I went to a UFO conference over the weekend up in Big Bear, California, called the Alien Snow Fest, and a guy spends some time talking to me, then walks out, and he thinks he's not seen. I happen to be walking out right behind me. Proceeds to spit on my car. And, you know, where is that coming from? What? what? What is that about? I mean, why the hate? In any case, Jeez. I have been through the ringer because of this, but, um, and, and, but the visitors are very interested in preserving free will. This is in my opinion. This is always my opinion. I don't even know what they are. I'm not, I'm not in the camp that says they're definitely aliens and knows what planet they're from and everything else. I don't know what they are. That's a good breaking point, Whitley. Let me do the break, and then we'll continue. We have Whitley Strieber. He's written with Jeffrey Kripal, The Supernatural, which is the book we're going to get into next that we've moved away from the sci-fi world. With Gene and Chris in The Paracast. <laughs> I know that a lot of our listeners are interested in UFOs, the issue of giant skeletons found in America, paranormal investigations, and what the top researchers think about such topics. One online magazine has been presenting such unusual information since 1985. It is Alternate Perceptions Magazine at apmagazine.info. 
Use their search function to find articles on just about every topic imaginable. That's apmagazine.info. Do you need a website? Well, you can get a great deal on hosting services with Namecheap's legendary coupon code. They're offering substantial hosting discounts on shared hosting, business hosting, VPS hosting, reseller hosting, and even dedicated servers. Namecheap is preferred by millions. It's backed by a money-back guarantee. Use the coupon code LEGENDARY to cash in on the special deal at Namecheap.com, Namecheap.com. Hello, my name is Don Wiskin from HeartDrop.com, the distributors of Extendivite, the number one heart drop that people have been raving about for years. Every February for the last 16 years, HeartDrop.com has had a heart month sale to help you stay heart healthy. For only $115 plus shipping and handling, you can get a four-month supply of Extendivite in either liquid or capsule form to help you get started on your path to better health. Now is the time to stock up. Order what you need. Stay heart healthy all year with the number one heart drop, Extendivite. To order your Extendivite, call 1-877-928-8822. That's 1-877-928-8822. 928-8822 or visit our website heartdrop.com Extend your life with Extend Water is the single most important thing your body needs, so you want to be sure it's the best for you and your family. Since 2005, thousands have depended on Berkey Purified Water. The Berkey Guy provides the lowest priced filtration systems in every size. For incredibly delicious water now and in an emergency, get to GoBerkey.com or call 877-886-3653. 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com. This is a healthcare alert from the Pain Relief Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one suffers from knee, back, shoulder, or ankle pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, we've got great news. You don't have to suffer any longer. You can immediately qualify for a pain relieving brace at little or no cost to you by calling our 24 7 pain relief hotline at 866 389 0620. Delivery is free and all paperwork is handled for you. If you are on Medicare and have knee, back, shoulder, or ankle pain, don't wait you can qualify to immediately receive a pain-relieving brace at little or no cost by calling our 24-7 pain hotline now at 866-389-0620. Our representatives are standing by 24-7 to take your call and rush you your pain-relieving brace at little or no cost to you. Shipping is free and all paperwork is handled for you. Just call 866-389-0620. That's 866-389-0620. Again, 866-389-0620. Paid non attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas, is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice, and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention, Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24 7. Call 800 261 0937. That's 800 261 0937. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. I do want to tell you that we have a second radio show for you to listen to. It's called After the Paracast. After the Paracast can be whatever we want it to be, a wrap-up show, extended interviews, whatever. And to hear it, you have to be a member of the Paracast Plus. Go to plus.theparacast.com. That's plus.theparacast.com. We also offer some show transcripts. Start getting into the video thing. We offer the ad-free version of this show for those who don't like to scroll through ads. And then we even give you higher quality audio. So you can hear the perfect voices of Chris O'Brien and Whitley Strieber. And I'll kind of pass through. You know how things are. In any case, we welcome Whitley Strieber to the show. And Chris and he were focusing now on 
obviously the question about being this fiction writer and the fact writer. And I wanted to ask you here, because we don't have an endless amount of time and we have zillions of questions to ask, in writing The Supernatural, can maybe, and this is going to ask you a 20-year question to refer to here, Whitley, and that is, from the days of communion to the days of supernatural, where do you think you're thinking about the strange mysteries has gone? That is not a small question, obviously. It's now, worth but, about but, three but episodes. I, but I just, yeah, I, I just want to backtrack for a second and finish my answer to the previous question. Go ahead, because please. Because I feel it's important. And that is the visitors, for whatever they are, whether it's a negative presence, a positive presence, or a presence we don't understand, which is what I think it is, they have done one thing and very clearly, which is they have kept this all open. They chose me, not Carl Sagan not some other authority. They chose somebody who was articulate and could make their case and tell their story, but who could also be rejected and disbelieved without any trouble. A horror novel. How, where is my authority? None. Zero. Also, though, in my family, there is a deep connection to the Roswell incident in that one of my uncles was involved in the process of recovering and working on the debris from Roswell. So they were already involved with the family in some way, perhaps not in, he never reported any close encounters or anything that I know of, but th th we were somehow on their radar. And that's why I think I ended up in this. And I always think that if they had wanted to impose themselves on us, they would have done it already. They, they hang back. They sit quietly. They don't step forward because they're letting us make our own way with something that is actually incredibly difficult for a whole lot of reasons. Yeah. It, it's the evolution of your, your work and your thinking has always sort of had this kind of hint that there's something deeply uh, symbiotic almost or, or reflective within the, uh, the history of this phenomenon and the way that uh, cultural memes relating to this phenomenon have, have, have grown and evolved and separated out into sub memes. And it must be, uh, a, a, <laughs> I don't know how, how it would feel to be, you know, you and, and being, at the root of just a meme propagation that occurred uh, when communion came out. And one thing that, that you've never done is really come right out and state that, uh, you know, these visitors are one thing and they're another thing. But um, again, I, I've, I've always felt this kind of evolution of your thinking throughout this. And, and I'm, I'm just uh, taken by, by your new book uh, with Jeff, Jeffrey Kripal. It's, it's really highly suggestive of something that is being manifested for us by us, but is also different. And there's there's some external element that uh, seems to be at play here or at work, if you will. Well, let's go back to the previous question. The question was, how has my thinking changed between communion and this book at Supernatural? And the answer is actually, in my case, not much. What has changed, however, or what happened to me, is that the uh, media picked up on my book, and I talk about this in Supernatural, they picked up on communion and ran with the idea of alien abductee Whitley Straber, rectal probe, yuck, 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 let's laugh him off and get him out of here, because he's scary, And but mainly, we have been lying to the public for years, we know it. And we want to do anything we can to continue that lie. Let's help the Air Force. Let's help the Central Intelligence Agency. Let's do everything we can to make sure this cover-up stays in place so we won't get what we deserve, which is to be totally discredited at every level. They're not real. They haven't been real for years, the media, I mean. just And this is a blanket statement, big blanket statement. Now, as far as my thinking is concerned, in the frontispiece of communion, what was ignored by them, and I was not effective. I'm, this is not entirely their fault. I was not effective. I tried hard, but 
but I could not get through. What was ignored by them was this phrase, the human mind winks back from the dark, and it's terribly important. Communion is a book of perceptions, not a book of claims. And the subsequent books are too. But they were taken to be me making a case for having actually been abducted by real aliens, when in fact, I don't know what happened. I can tell you there were physical side effects. I can tell you that there is an implant in my left ear right now. I can tell you when it was implanted. I can tell you all of those things. But what I can't tell you is in the final sense who did it and what they did and why. That I cannot tell you. Just very briefly, maybe parenthetically, Whitley, from time to time, I've made this argument from a devil's advocate standpoint that maybe some so-called abductions are staged for a benefit or for the benefit of the U.S. government and do not involve any alien or paranormal force. Who knows? Sure. I wouldn't disagree that that isn't possible. It's a big, strange universe. And we're just a small, strange part of it, so that, sure, that's possible. What the motive would be would be another question. Although, when you look at this carefully and you spend time, and I've been much deeper into this world than I'm really able to say, not because I'm keeping a secret, but because it's beyond language. It does not work. You can't explain some of this stuff. It's unexplainable. In any case, there is a level of conflict in there somewhere. It appears that somehow or another, at some level, some kind of, I would hesitate to call it a battle, but there is some kind of tension, a, a negative and a positive vision of some sort are unfolding kind of in each other's faces. And what we see is, to some extent, a side effect of the friction between them. You know, uh, this is another one of those intriguing possibilities. Let's get into it in our next segment. With Whitley Strieber, the book is The Supernatural. You're on with Gene and Chris. You're in The Paracast. <laughs> Visit GCNlive.com today. Removing bad taste and odor from your drinking water is easy. Removing the bad stuff you don't taste is what ProPure does best. Water the way nature meant it to be. Clean, crisp, and refreshing. See the complete line of ProPure countertop, inline gravity, and household water filtration products. Visit your authorized ProPure dealer or ProPureUSA.com. That's P R O P U R USA.com. Or call 800 544 3533. No other network provides the level of customer service we do. When it comes to radio advertising, we are your one-stop shop. And no matter how big or small your business is, we can help. Email us at advertise at GCNlive.com and an experienced advertising executive will help you take the first step towards driving more customers to your business or website. Advertise at GCNlive.com. Easy, affordable, effective. Ted Anderson telling you about Jordan Rubin's Beyond Organic Green-Fed Raw Cheddar Artesian Cheese featuring whole milk created through ancient dairy breeding, unpasteurized, untreated whole milk on the same farm the cows graze, containing natural sources of omega-3s, CLA protein, calcium, probiotics, and enzymes. I have never tasted cheese this good, and you need to try it. Contact your Longevity distributor or call 877-878-4203 or go to GCNteam.com. You haven't experienced yogurt until you've tried a Mossy, embodying health and flavor in a true whole milk, green-fed dairy beverage. Every sip pays homage to our old world cows and the ancient culturing methods their milk benefits from. With over 30 probiotics, a Mossy's undeniably nutritious, refined, cultured sensation bolsters your health and awakens your passion for dairy. A Mossy's so good, and you need to try it. Contact your Longevity distributor or call 877-878-4203 or go to GCNteam.com. 
Today, more than ever, it's imperative that you protect your digital privacy. EDEC Digital Forensics Signal Blocking Anti-Radiation Anti-Surveillance Faraday Bags shield the contents of your phones, tablets, and key fobs from 4G, Wi-Fi, GPS, Bluetooth, NFC, and more. Find us at edecdf.com slash radio or call us now at 805-222-4584. That's 805-222-4584. Radio listeners get 20% off your order. Hi, Peter Vaccaro for ParanormalDate.com. Are you looking for love in all the wrong places? Now you have a chance to change that by signing up for free at ParanormalDate.com. This incredible dating site puts people of like minds together. People who are interested in the strange, the unusual, mysteries, ghosts, UFOs, and the afterlife, and so much more. ParanormalDate.com was developed for you, people seeking a viable alternative to the other dating services. You can join for free by going to ParanormalDate.com, and if you decide you like it and want to connect with people, use the code GEORGE for a substantial discount. Mark Rawlings, president of ParanormalDate.com, says so many people hunger to share their experiences about the paranormal, the unexplainable, or the afterlife, and so much more, and this is the source for them to meet and share that common interest. So sign up for free at ParanormalDate.com, ParanormalDate.com and use the code GEORGE if you decide to connect with someone you like. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. This is Micah Hanks of the Gray Alien Report, and you're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. I want to thank you, Whitley Strieber, for one thing. And I'm getting over this virus, and it's been hard to concentrate. And you've kept me alert. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm I have an excellent memory, but I have never had a good memory for names. I, if anything, it's gotten worse. Well, you see, when I was a kid, they called me names too. But huh. usually, what they do is where I grew up, the name Steinberg should be fairly common in Brooklyn, New York. You'd think. You'd think, except that. I remember kids calling me, hey, Schnitzelberger. Yeah, but they were anti-Semites. That was part of it, yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. They didn't know any better. And when I went to the Deep South, I was working at radio stations. And what they would do, the sales manager at one station went, took me to all the Jewish merchants in Northwest Alabama. Hey, here's this Jewish guy from Brooklyn, New York, advertised with us. I'm serious. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Well, Ouch. They're I'm not going to touch that one, boy. That's, the, that's sticky the down there. Prejudice. It's a crazy word. Let's go on. Chris? Well, I have, I have an interesting question here that I'd like to, um, to ask Whitley. Uh, Whitley, we have a question thread at forum.theparacast.com where our really up to speed, bright, and very uh, in, intuitive and and extremely smart listeners, I must say. I learn a lot just by tuning into our own forums. And I I do have kind of a a bit of a background in this whole subject area, but we do have quite a number of questions for you. And one of the questions caught my attention, and it comes from Psychedelic Alchemist, um, who's been a forum poster uh, for almost three years now. And he, he asks, um, or he mentions that he recently read a short passage in John Mack's passport to the cosmos that caught his attention and it stated that you had been on a path uh, to personal transformation through the Gurdjieff Foundation coupled with intense meditation before you became aware of your visitor experiences so here is his as he calls it chicken and the egg question do you feel that Gurdjieff's uh, your Gurdjieff work was a catalyst for your experiences or did prior unknown experiences perhaps trigger your interest in a quest for transformation that's the first question Okay, well, let's not go to the second question. Let me, let me first get to this one. Both things are true in this sense. I, I'm pretty sure some extraordinary things happened to me when I was a child. 
at the very least, I was in some kind of a program as a very small child at Randolph Air Force Base that was, for whatever reason, extremely traumatic. I know it existed because a friend of mine, a very close friend to this day, was recruited for it. His parents were, were approached by a, a couple from the Air Force to recruit him for it, and he was actually sitting in the living room listening to the conversation when the recruitment effort was made. They mentioned a Skinner box, and his parents showed them the door. Unfortunately, my parents either they didn't know what that was or they did not show them the door, and I was terribly traumatized. I think the trauma cracked the cosmic egg and made my mind accessible to things that aren't supposed to be real that we normally just filter out. So I was open to this. And maybe I had visitor experiences as a child. I remember some things that suggest that, as I put in my book, The Secret School. Yeah, The Secret School. Actually, you go into quite a bit of detail about that. Oh, yeah. But here's the problem. An adult mind looking back on childhood memories and filling in the blanks. Is yeah. that accurate or not? There's no way to tell. There are a few little things in that book, though, that are accurate and that I, I can talk about in just a minute. Now, let's go forward, though, to the next part of the question, which is very important and which is one I'm almost never asked because I don't make much of a thing about having been in the Gurji Foundation and being in it. Uh, I am heavily involved, however, in Gurjeev work and have been for nearly 50 years. That is a huge part of my close encounter experience because the language of the work and the language of the visitors that they chose to, with which they chose to address me are the same. And I understood what their approach to me meant because of my involvement in the work. It was a very important part of it. If I hadn't been in the work, I would have been completely at sea. I never would have understood to the depth that I have been able to understand anything close to it. And the reason is this. There are a couple of ideas in the Gurdjieff work, the idea of the law of three and the law of seven, which were addressed in my experience with the visitors numerous times. And you'll find, if you look in transformation, an analysis of an event involving the work's understanding of the law of the Gajif work's understanding of the law of three and the way the visitors used it to express themselves to me. Now, that was one thing. Another thing is that in the foundation and in Mr. Gurdjieff's work, you work with friction. It's not easy. It's not like some airy fairy meditation process. It's work. That's the, that word is used for a lot of very good reasons. And friction is central. The experience of inner friction, uh, having encounters that are uh, laden with friction in the context of your work, et cetera, and so forth. So when the visitors brought me friction, I reacted to it not by withdrawing in horror, but by absorbing it and making use of it in my work, inner work on my own consciousness, because I knew how to do it. And that's why people say to me, well, they did this and that awful thing to you. How can you possibly think that they are anything except evil? And here's my answer. I benefited from that friction. I grew because of it. Well, so, you absorb the static uh, discharge yeah, that you so, get from fric friction. Yeah, exactly. So if they were if they were good or evil, I don't even care. I'm not even interested in going down that path. What I am, in, am interested in is can I benefit or not? And I could in these cases, very much so. So yes and yes, the Gurdjieff work was crucial to my ability to work with the visitors and – my childhood experiences undoubtedly were also part of a preparation, which is a life preparation. No question in my mind about it. I was probably on some level, maybe that not even the visitors understand fully, being prepared for this from a young age. 
Well, you know, that might uh, explain why people who haven't had the background um, and people who haven't done the work, um, shall we say, in this particular example, um, are so overwhelmed and bewildered by what they consider to be an abduction experience that they they react to, uh, in most you know cases, uh, from from a fearful, uh, almost like victimized uh, point of view. And yeah. someone with a background in uh, meditation and doing work, especially the kind of uh, Sufi-tinged work that Gurdjieff had, um, would be, I think, less inclined to be terrified and be able to embrace it a little bit more. More um, up to it. I mean, they they came into my life and beat the dickens out of me by so doing, finally waking me up to their presence. Uh, I they They had been trying to get through to me at least since the previous October uh, in uh, it, it, when this happened in December of 85. And finally, in December of 85, they just hauled off and beat me, beat the dickens out of me until I finally <laughs> broke through and realized they were there and at all because I was filtering them out like we all do. And yeah, I, what I thought was after I, I eventually became clear to me that somebody was there and had done this and it, they didn't look to me to be anything like what I would call human. I thought to myself, wow, I'm not going to hide from this. I'm going to go out in the woods and see what happens. Let's do the break here and go on with that. We have Whitley Streber, co-author of The Supernatural. You're on with Gene and Chris. You're in The Paracast. <laughs> Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. Conspiracy Journal is your number one source for the hidden world of the weird and strange. We bring you thought-provoking and controversial material for free-thinking individuals who are seeking what is really going on in our world today. Some of this material may adversely affect you. Other pieces are meant to enlighten. Either way, be prepared to be intrigued by such things as the reality of UFOs, ghosts, strange creatures from time and space, hidden conspiracies, time travel, Nikola Tesla, suppressed technology, and a whole lot more. You can find out more by visiting our website at conspiracyjournal.com. There you can sign up for our free weekly newsletter sent directly to your email address. Find out what they don't want you to know. We use mobile devices right against our bodies every day, but growing scientific evidence has emerged showing serious health risks associated with exposure to EMF radiation emitted from these devices. The solution is Defender Shield, the most effective mobile radiation shielding ever developed. Defender Shield blocks virtually 100% of EMF radiation from cell phones, tablets, and laptops and starts at just $64.99. Buy now at DefenderShield.com. For 10% off, use promo code GCN. DefenderShield.com, the worldwide leader in mobile radiation shielding. Are your Google search results killing you? Unflattering content in blogs, news articles, online reviews, social media, or other sources can jeopardize your reputation, your business, and your livelihood. Let Reputation.com help. Our patented technology will make the truth about you more visible while pushing down unwanted negative content. Improve your Google search results. Call Reputation.com at 1-800-831-0771 for a free consultation. That's 800-831-0771. Owe $10,000 or more to the IRS? Get on board with the tax admiral. Don't pick on the IRS alone. I'll cut penalties and reduce your overall tax bill. Sometimes I can even get it zeroed out completely. We're an A-rated company helping people clean up their mess with the IRS. If you owe $10,000 or more, then call the tax admiral. Call 800-287-7180. Again, that's 800-287-7180. 800-287-7180. As if chlorine in our water weren't bad enough, now they're adding ammonia? It's true. Some municipalities are now adding ammonia plus chlorine to your water supply. It's a disinfectant called chloramine. 
But with a trusted Big Berkey water filter, you can keep chloramine out of your water. New NSF EPA certified lab tests show EPA Berkey water filters remove chloramines, pharmaceuticals, BPA, pesticides, bacteria and viruses, all forms of fluoride, and much more. Big Berkey water filters are the original and most trusted on the market. The gold standard in water purification. And our filters last for years at less than two cents per gallon. Big Berkey, the one that's powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. Get your Big Berkey today. Call 1-877-99-BERKEY or click BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. That's 1-877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey Water Filters, for the love of clean water. Most of you know that heart disease is the number one silent killer in the U.S. What if I told you for just $54.95 a month you could fight against heart disease naturally? At Heart and Body Extract, we've been helping thousands of people get back to a healthier heart. Don't just take my word for it. Check out all of the success stories at hbextract.com. Or to order, call 866-295-5305. That's 866-295-5305. hbextract.com. Don't risk it when you can take charge of it. Hi, this is Tracy Torme, screenwriter, producer. You're listening to Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. Let's continue with Whitley Streeper on the Paracast. Whitley, you were in the middle of a very important answer to a question yeah. and a comment. I want you to continue. Well, I mean, they beat me up. I eventually figured out that this had been something real and that it was no normal experience. It could not be explained away. And so my choices were these. Did I hide from it, move back to the city, leave my cabin, maybe go to a psychiatrist or try to work it out in a more conventional way? Uh, did I just ignore it? Did I join a UFO abductee group and sit around saying how horrible they are and how dreadful what they did to me was, et cetera, et cetera, or go for it. I went for it. I saw what they had done. I saw the way I could use the trauma and the friction of it in my inner work, in my Gurdjieff related inner work, because I'd done that in for years for, at that point for 15 years in the foundation. I had been working, going against myself and working in all kinds of different ways, never as intensely as this. I mean, boy, I'm telling you, 15 minutes with the 15 seconds with the visitors, 15 years in the work. <laughs> Believe me, it ain't easy. You know, uh, what you were talking briefly in passing about so called UFO abduction groups, and we know that there are some abduction researchers out there. And I mention one because when we had him on the show, we had people going berserk. And that was Dr. David Jacobs. And his point of view being that the aliens, because he thinks they're aliens, are creating this human hybrid, hubrid race that's going to eventually take us over, that E.T. is here to take us over, which sounds more like the sci-fi novel than anything. Well, How you do know, you approach that? How do I approach it as being an unlikely possibility, but at the same time, if they are here, if there are aliens here on that level, and there are something is here on that level, I'm not so sure they are aliens as we conventionally understand them, but I wouldn't be at all surprised if they weren't af affecting the human genome, but probably in ways that we don't fully understand, and I'll tell you why. One thing that we are doing to ourselves right now is we are deciding we don't have souls. We are on a path to soul blindness. It sounds uh, to me like you've been watching the Republican presidential debates. I don't follow <laughs> politics much, uh, although I will tell you what will happen in this campaign. In all likelihood, if Bernie Sanders wins and one of the far-right Republicans wins, then uh, Bloomberg will join, will enter the race. There will be a three way race. Uh, there will be a tie in the Electoral College in the sense that no one candidate will get a majority in the Electoral College. And it will be up to Congress to decide who the next president is. And Congress will have be able to choose from among the three candidates. They will choose Bloomberg. 
So uh, that is probably what will happen. I think. Well, it, you heard it here first, first yeah, folks. If things continue the way they are, that's what will happen. Because I have a, it, unless Hillary Clinton can win, and, and it's a if it's a fight between Ted Cruz and Hillary Clinton, or uh, Ted Cruz, Hillary Clinton, Clinton will win easily. Trump, Clinton, Clinton probably will win. Uh, if it's just Bernie Sanders versus Ted Cruz or Donald Trump, it's anybody's guess. So well, that, it's let's, let's not talk election. politics. And as far as who should win, I have no desire to say anything about that publicly. That's not my brief. No, no dog in the fight. I have no dog in the fight, no. Well, it's uh, I think uh, more than most, more than any election really in the past 40 years – this is definitely the year of the outsider, no question. Well, yeah, so far. Uh, by the way, with regard to Hillary Clinton and disclosure, since I'm sure that some of the listeners are thinking about that now that this has been brought up, right? remember what she said. She did not say, uh, I will disclose the truth about UFOs like, like uh, Jimmy Carter said until he got – the Air Force got a hold of him and shut him up for the rest of his life, I would think. She said, I will get to the bottom of it. That may or may not mean she will say right. what she found at the bottom of it. Well, it also sounds like it's placating the voter. Mm. It's, a, it's a bid for some votes because there is a constituency of a few million people who will vote for a candidate who promises disclosure. And that could be the tipping point. It's a, it's a small group, maybe a million, maybe less. They probably know exactly how many the candidates. But when Bernie Sanders was asked about it, he was very flip about it. He just ignored it. He thought it was ridiculous. We still have John Podesta. Well, now, you know, are we ready for the kind of disclosure that John Podesta wants? Uh, it ain't going to happen. George H.W. Bush last last May said he told the truth, however, briefly, uh, and probably by accident, since he's 91, he said, uh, the public's not ready for this. And that is the truth. The public's not ready for this. The visitors said to Phil Corso, what's on offer is a new world if you can take it. How can we take it? I mean, look it out there. Uh, David Jacobs, it, it, let, let me tell you what would happen. If the kind of disclosure that Leslie Keene and John Podesta, their good friends, and the disclosure people long for happened, if, say, some middle-level person at JPL said, yes, we have seen some objects that could be intelligently controlled, within 48 hours, there would be a question or at the next presidential press conference uh, it has been admitted that there are craft out there, possibly under con intelligent control. What about the abductions? Because that's where everyone will go immediately. And all of a sudden, the media, when, when the president says, well, we don't know anything about that, or uh, we're not sure that's even happening, the media is going to run, not walk, to the most sensationalistic most scary, most ratings-producing possible abduction people. And all of a sudden, people like David Jacobs will have not an audience of 300 people at a UFO conference, but an audience of 50 million people. All of a sudden, is that going to work out? It's not going to work out is the answer. And I think the visitors know that very well. And so it's, I think it's highly unlikely that there will be disclosure because I don't think that we have anything to do much with whether or not there's disclosure. I think it's up to them. But How much of this secret do you think the government really knows, if anything? I don't think they know as much as we'd like to believe. I think they know there are objects flying around and they probably do have some materials because my Uncle Mickey said they did. And he was there at General Exxon. Uh, uh, Arthur Exxon, who was also there, told me in great detail about it. So yeah, they've got materials. And uh, Robert Sauerbacher, the metallurgist, said that uh, it told me a little bit about it too. Uh, so that he had worked on some of these materials, apparently that uh, Jesse Marcel and so forth gathered and that went to Wright Field and then into the metallurgy community. 
so yeah, they have materials. Maybe they have bodies. I don't know. That's certainly possible. I wouldn't. I mean, if if something crashed and somebody was in it, probably they do have bodies. I had a fabulous couple of people on the radio program the other week uh, about the Aztec UFO crash. Uh, Boy, Scott Ramsey. Yeah, I mean, they were awesome. They they really have done their homework. Though, and uh, so yeah, I think it's possible they do know a lot about it. But here's the Here's the problem. It gets back to my comment earlier about us losing, losing, going soul blind. We don't believe in the soul, but let me tell you something. It exists. It's real. It's why we're here. And not only that, in the level of second body, which is what we call the soul, there is an elaborate world, and this is the core part of the core of supernatural, a real world. We're embedded in it, in the physical. The physical is much smaller than, than this other world. And not only that, it is richly endowed with technologies that we can't even begin to imagine or understand. And the more we deny it, the more we ensure that we cannot make real progress as a species, and that the new world on offer is one that we cannot take. Sounds like a world of self-discovery, and we'll get into more of that quest with Whitley Strieber, co-author of Supernatural. Let me remind you, listeners, we have that second radio show after the Paracast, part of the Paracast Plus. Go to plus.theparacast.com. That's plus.theparacast.com. Dot com for more. With Gene and Chris, you're in the Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. Attack of the Rockoids has been well received by critics and readers alike. It's a thrill a minute story you'll never forget. A former U.S. military intelligence officer is haunted by intense dreams about a beautiful woman pleading for his help after a terrible battle in outer space. But the dreams turn out to be true and thrust him into a telepathic love affair with a woman whose faraway planet is intent on destroying the Earth. And now the gripping tale continues in The Coming of the Protectors. It's the second book of the Rockoids trilogy, a galaxy-spanning adventure that pits our hapless heroes against powerful, fanatical enemies that threaten the lives of freedom-loving beings everywhere. Attack of the Rockoids and The Coming of the Protectors, classic science fiction at its best, available now. For more details, visit rockoids.com. That's R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S dot com. What would your life be like if you woke up each morning with new vitality, feeling better than you have in years, and you noticed a difference in your sleeping patterns, blood sugar levels, and had a sense of well-being overall? There's something that is changing thousands of people's lives, and you could be one of them. It's called Heart and Body Extract. Sharon Harris, co-creator of Heart and Body Extract, talks about the positive effects of Heart and Body Extract. What happens with the formula Heart and Body Extract is it's giving the body the necessary vitamins, minerals, amino acids, enzymes, and phytonutrients so, so the body will heal itself. And yes, the body does have the ability to balance blood pressure, balance cholesterol, clean and unclog the arteries. It can also work on uh, balancing the circulation for diabetics. So the body is an amazing thing. It simply needs some help so it has the tools to heal itself. Heart and body extract gets results. To order your two-month supply, call now, toll-free at 866-295-5305. Order online at hbextract.com. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. Whitley Streeper is with us, and we're talking about, I guess, discovering a wider world around us. It sounds, Whitley, when you talk about it here, is we're living here with tunnel vision. Or yeah. we have 2100 vision and we somehow need to get 2020. Yeah, that's, that's accurate. But at the same time, how do we get that? How do we do this? And where do we go? 
Uh, well, as a culture, the Western world is going in the wrong direction. And if you look at the world in general, we have been trying to address the meaning of what Jeff and I call the supernatural, two words, for all of our history. If you look back across the human past, it is a rubble of gods and the weapons and skeletons of those of us who have been fighting over which God is true. Yeah, except for greed, probably more people have been killed in the name of religion and you know one societal control mechanism versus another than, than any other cause in human history, uh, undoubtedly. Well, what happens is we see these things. And they have an immense impact on us, and not necessarily a negative one. Well, for example, uh, St. Paul sees a light or something on the road to Damascus. It transforms his being. He becomes an advocate for that which he had been trying to destroy. Complete reversal. And he changes the world on the basis of a flash of light. But how does he change it? He changes it in a very specific way. He shows the idea that the individual is important to God. Prior to St. Paul, the only people who were important to God were the leaders. The emperor got to become a deity, got deified, but the average guy, the average aristocrat got a nice tomb, and the average grunt working in some mine slaving for the Romans died and was forgotten and became part of the earth again and didn't even matter. But suddenly there is this one man walking from city to city across the Mediterranean basin saying, walking out an unknown man in the middle of these cities and saying that you do matter to God. You do matter and you must love each other and you must be compassionate because God cares and God is interested in you. Then fast forward 300 years, here comes St. Augustine, another hellraiser who suddenly has a conversion. He proceeds to write The City of God, the most important book in the history of Western thought. It is the most important book in the history of Western thought because it identifies the individual and the borders of the individual and says that every individual is important. The founding fathers had read it carefully. You can see it reflected in the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, that and much Masonic literature, which also reflects the city of God. So, yeah, we maybe we don't get it right with our religions, but we get it somewhat right every time. What Jeff and I want to do are saying is now it's possible to go beyond that and to look at this presence objectively. We have the academic tools to look at its, at its influence in our world across the past. We have the scientific tools to look at how it functions in our world now. Instead of saying, oh, ghosts aren't real, aliens are BS, et cetera, et cetera, let's say this. There are people reporting these effects. So what are they reporting? Let's look and see, instead of saying, because it doesn't fit our very narrow Newtonian worldview, which obviously is not true, it's not untrue, it's not, it's not completely accurate, if it, it doesn't fit that, then let's see what it is. Let's take a look. Why not? And it, you know, there's tremendous resistance in the scientific community and in the academic community to just taking an objective look at it. We have the tools. We certainly do. And, and, and this leads me to, I think, a very good question for this point in the conversation uh, that's posted by William Stratham. And he says, Mr. Streber, I've read that you're a practicing Catholic, and even if not, perhaps you care to respond. For background, the New Testament book of Acts, chapter 26, verse 18, says Jesus sent Paul to turn people from, quote, darkness to light, and from the power of Satan to God, unquote. Now, your work of imagining and writing horror stories like Night Church about Satanists meeting in a Catholic church in Queens surely must have had some sort of impact on your life. And he's wondering, do you think your imaginary work on dark n novels uh, exposed you to something real? And if so, what is the relationship in the supernatural world, as you and Jeffrey uh, talk about, 
What is the relationship between Jesus and Satan, that dichotomy, and the strange communion entities you've reported? And he goes on to ask about, you know, do you think Satan is an external agent uh, or merely a human mental construct? And at some point, I think uh, Mike Cleland, in his recent book on owls and synchronicity, said that, that you believe that grays are submitted to God. Why do you believe that? Is this all grounded through kind of a Judeo-Christian thing? or? Well, again, it's a complex question. Uh, I just interviewed Mike Cleland uh, on uh, Dreamland a couple weeks ago about his book, and it was quite a good interview. He's an interesting, interesting man. Yes, we had him on a few weeks ago, too. Yeah. So, uh, And he's got a lot to say in that book that's worth reading. So now I'm going to simplify this question and my response to it. I am a believer in Jesus, not necessarily in the same way the Catholics or the Christians are, but I think that Jesus had a special role to play in this world. I don't understand it. I don't know where he came from. I don't know if he even knew the role he was playing, but he played it, and St. Paul did too. St. Paul drew a lot of his ritual uh, ideas for the Mass and so forth out of the Mithraic tradition. He was from Tarsus, which is the city of the bull, which is the also the place where the Mithraic religion was centered. It was at the time a secret religion. He switched it to the blood of the lamb, basically. Right, he bl- blood of the lamb instead of the blood of the bull. He's giving a message there. He's saying... It's not a bull that we're concerned about. It's ourselves in the context of peace. He is building his ritual against the Mithraic ritual. He's also adopting certain precepts so that he could get more adherence quickly. Well, of course. Later on, in fact, uh, I, I believe it was Tertullian who wrote in his piece Contra Celsus. We don't have the works of Celsus. They were all burned by the Christians. But in Contra Celsus, he mentions that it is claimed that Paul took Christian ritual from the Mithraic ritual. I believe it's in Contra Celsus. And I think Tertullian was the first to actually propose time travel, suggesting that Satan had, had traveled back in time in order to confuse the issue and uh, to make it seem as if the Mithraic ritual had preceded the Mass. Now, that kind of confusion is inevitable when people are trying to to promote and forward a system of beliefs. Well, that's the the, ultimate in back engineering. (laughs) Yeah. In the end, what do I believe? I don't really believe anything. I believe the question. As I said, Jesus was something important, but as to what it was or whether or not he even knew it is a matter of open question for me. Who Paul was and what really happened to him is a matter of open question. I will not go so far as to say that the interpretations that followed that gave rise to Christian religion are correct. I wouldn't say that about any religion, about Islam, about any religion. I will note that a being of light was in the cave with Muhammad, supposedly, that it was a flash of light or a or an experience with light uh, that affected St. Paul. And there are so many other instances of light in, in, in human life, the burning bush, that have had a tremendous effect on human culture. Let's break it right there. Whitley, and we'll continue. We have Whitley Streber with Gene and Chris. You're in The Paracast. <laughs> Do you need a website? Well, you can get a great deal on hosting services with Namecheap's legendary coupon code. They're offering substantial hosting discounts on shared hosting, business hosting, VPS hosting, reseller hosting, and even dedicated servers. Namecheap is preferred by millions. It's backed by a money-back guarantee. Use the coupon code LEGENDARY to cash in on the special deal at Namecheap.com, Namecheap.com. 
first game attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there's the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. I'm Nick Soboleski, a select quote agent with a true story that could save you hundreds of dollars a year. A woman named Linda just called. Her husband, Ray, has a $300,000 group life insurance policy, but is changing jobs and can't take it with him. Well, I impartially shot the highly rated term life insurance companies we represent and found Ray, who is 41 and takes medication to control his cholesterol, a 10-year, $500,000 policy for under $26 a month. That's almost twice the coverage for less than half of what he had paid. If SelectQuote hasn't shopped for your life insurance, you're probably paying too much. For your free quote, call 1-800-403-4885. That's 1-800-403-4885. 1-800-403-4885. Or go to SelectQuote.com. We shop. You save. Get full details on the example policy at slowquote.com slash commercials. Your price could vary depending on your health issuing company and other factors not available in all states. My dad was 59 when he collapsed from a heart attack late last year. Just this past August was when we spread his ashes on the St. Croix River. I loved my dad, but boy was he stubborn. He hadn't been to the doctor in over 25 years. His excuse? He simply couldn't afford it. He wasn't a rich man by any means. At less than $107 per month, libertyoncall.org would have been the perfect alternative for my father. Don't wait. Go to libertyoncall.org right now for not just your sake, but for the sake of your loved ones. Again, that's libertyoncall.org. Hi, Peter Vaccaro for ParanormalDate.com. Are you looking for love in all the wrong places? Now you have a chance to change that by signing up for free at ParanormalDate.com. This incredible dating site puts people of like minds together. People who are interested in the strange, the unusual, mysteries, ghosts, UFOs, and the afterlife, and so much more. ParanormalDate.com was developed for you, people seeking a viable alternative to the other dating services. You can join for free by going to ParanormalDate.com, and if you decide you like it and want to connect with people, use the code GEORGE for a substantial discount. Mark Rawlings, president of ParanormalDate.com, says so many people hunger to share their experiences about the paranormal, the unexplainable, or the afterlife, and so much more, and this is the source for them to meet and share that common interest. So sign up for free at ParanormalDate.com, ParanormalDate.com, and use the code GEORGE if you decide to connect with someone you like. Most of you know that heart disease is the number one silent killer in the U.S. What if I told you for just $54.95 a month you could fight against heart disease naturally at Heart and Body Extract? We've been helping thousands of people get back to a healthier heart. Don't just take my word for it. Check out all of the success stories at hbextract.com. Or to order, call 866-295-5305. That's 866-295-5305. hbextract.com. Don't risk it when you can take charge of it. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. We have Whitley Strieber, co-author of The Supernatural with Gene and Chris, and Whitley was in the midst of an answer. I do want you to continue. Yeah, please. beans of light, burning bushes. Uh, yes. That's real riveting stuff if you're uh, into can, Old Testament kind of descriptions. We can conclude from these incidents of light throughout the history of the human species that light has something to do with the formation and evolution of culture and takes us in the direction of belief and in the case of the Christian world, in the direction of the value of the individual, which is at the core of Western civilization. This is why I was so- Humanism. I mean, that's, you know- Yes, yes, exactly. Well, Uh, Willie, you know, you are sitting at a quincunx of meme propagation and, you know, you're grounding this in, I think- 
languaging and terms that uh, the average person in the West can understand. But someone who wants to play devil's advocate would say, uh, well, that was the Middle East. And, uh, you know, these beings of light could have been, you know, one of uh, 12 different types of jinn. You know, there's a whole incredible pantheon of yeah. paranormal entities that exist in, in, in the Middle East, uh, in the traditions and, and mythology of the Middle East. And so... You know, what we're looking at is something, obviously, that is cross-cultural in nation in, in nature, and it also, you're using descriptions from one culture to another that all seem to be indicating the same thing. Yeah. How does it feel to be someone that's sitting there uh, being at a, a very crucial juncture of how these things are being manifested from the ancient times and now are, are being manifested in modern times? Let's look at them objectively. That's what I'm about. I am about not saying, not good identifying caveat. them, <laughs> aliens, jinn, ghosts, spirits, this, angels, demons. Yeah. Everyone wants my guys to be the demons and the angels to be somebody else. But I want to remind anyone who's thinking in, those, in that direction what Rainier Maria Rilke said in his eighth elegy, every angel is terrible. And what makes the angels so terrible is that the angel looks into your soul and takes your consciousness with him into places you find it very, very hard to go. So when you tell me, well, an angel would be beautiful, I come back and I say, you can expect an angel to be very dangerous, very dangerous. And that's exactly what the visitors were. They were extremely dangerous. In Supernatural, we go in a lot, especially Jeff, into the whole idea of the dangerous sacred. Because I, I went deep into this. I, I was deep into the rules and the life of the other world, of the, the world of second body. And its rules are different from the rules of this world. There aren't any illusions there. It's not a world of illusion. And as far as angels and demons are concerned, those are energies, and you take them as you will. You make the angels. You make the demons. The energies are just energies. As far as belief systems are concerned and jinn and all of these things, forget it. Let's forget it. Let's step past it and say there is something there. We know that because of the way it affects us. But let's not take that next step. Let's, as Jeff says in the book, let's make the cut. Let's just not go to a decision about what it is. We only say it is. So in other words, you're, you're going beyond duality. You're going beyond good and bad, positive or negative, young or old. You're, you're looking at something that's liminal. Let me read you the dedication to the book, and it will explain an awful lot about where I'm going and where I'm coming from. I dedicate this book to the memory of Anne Streber. We evolved our approach to the supernatural together. She contributed three foundational insights. The first is that the close encounter experience is something unknown and must be kept in question. Second, that the question must be deepened and can only be resolved by scientific and academic inquiry. It must no longer be dismissed with assumptions, beliefs, and premature theorizing. Third, that after reading in excess of 200,000 testaments from the public about close encounter experiences, she was able to say with authority that close encounters with apparent aliens often include perceptions of the dead as well. It is on her rigorous questioning and tireless inquiry that my own insights depend. Anne was a brilliant woman and an expert when it came to turning beliefs back on themselves until they became questions. And if I had not had her at my side, I would not have been able to go down the path I've gone down. And I'll tell you why we're here, what the supernatural is really all about. If the visitors do want to emerge more clearly into our level, they have not been able to do that because there has been no place for the intellectual cultures to turn to. There's been no place for them to go. Where are they going to go? To the flying saucer stories or the alien abduction horror stories? 
there's not enough there. There's no substance there. There's no there there. What the supernatural does is it offers them a ground to begin questioning this. And that is, if there is disclosure now, there is a place for them to turn to start working to make this all come into some sort of focus in the future. A new world, if you can take it. We're not going to be able to take it with the alien abduction stories and the confused flying saucer rumors. But we can, if we use our tools of academic and scientific inquiry, to look carefully at what we already have available to us. The bodies of the close encounter witnesses and the, perhaps the information that the government has in its hands, from there, we start to build our side of a relationship. Uh, yeah, and, and that sounds great in theory, uh, Whitley, but the bottom line is right now, and the reality of the situation is that you have a lot of people, in, in my estimation, formulating a new religion for the 21st century based on aliens, not some sort of divine connection that each of us have with the divine. And what we're seeing is a lot of uh, hoaxes, a lot of pop culture, just total misinformation, disinformation. It's a catch-22. The more this evolves into a pop culture sort of realm, a very superficial realm, the less likely it is for academia and the scientific community to want to be involved. This is third rail subject matter right now. And unless the visitors, uh, for lack of a better term, make themselves known, it is going to continue down the road of disenfranchisement, marginalization. We're pushing the scientific community and the academic community and the philosophic, wonderful wisdom that we have in our cultures, uh, we're pushing them away from the subject matter. And a book like yours is very interesting because what it does is it creates that pop culture phenomenon in, in many ways. So I'd, I'd like to uh, know what we can do to attract the scientific and academic communities to this uh, very, very important issue. With Gene and Chris, you're in... The Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. We all have heard about the benefits of fish oils, but what about the presence of heavy metals, PCBs, dioxins, furans, and other contaminants found in fatty tissues of fish? GCNteam.com recognizes this risk and offers IFOS certified tested omega-3 fatty acids. EPA, DHA insist on IFOS omega-3 fatty acid certification. Get the best at GCNteam.com or call 877-878-4203. This is Rick Osick, president of Famous Footwear. Our company is working together with the March of Dimes through March for Babies to raise money and awareness about the serious problem of premature birth in the U.S., as a business leader, I know that babies born very sick or too soon cost businesses billions of dollars each year, in addition to the emotional stress on employees and their families. That's why Famous Footwear is committed to raising funds to improve the health of moms and babies everywhere. Won't you please join us in the March for Babies? Start a team today at marchforbabies.org. Hi, I'm Dr. Joel Wallach, the Dead Doctors Don't Lie guy, formerly Air Force Lieutenant Colonel, Air National Guard and Reservist. I'm looking for veterans, active duty military personnel to join the 90 for Life Crusade to save America. She needs your skills, courage, and loyalty more than ever. Contact GCNteam.com. Because of the financial and health care collapse, veterans are currently struggling finding jobs. Frustrated looking for a job? Change your tactics. Join the 90 for Life Crusade to save America. Start a health care business with FDI Longevity 90 for Life Crusade. Contact GCNteam.com immediately. We're looking for military specialists who can use a computer and communicate information and execute a battle plan. Join the admirals, Navy SEALs, Marines, pilots, Army officers, military police, sheriffs, police officers, firemen, and first responders already enrolled in the 90 for Life Crusade. Contact GCNteam.com now. FDI Longevity will help you apply your military skills to the task of saving America through health and financial programs. Contact GCNteam.com. Enlist in GCNteam.com and save America. 
Today, more than ever, it's imperative that you protect your digital privacy. EDEC Digital Forensics Signal Blocking Anti-Radiation Anti-Surveillance Faraday Bags shield the contents of your phones, tablets, and key fobs from 4G, Wi-Fi, GPS, Bluetooth, NFC, and more. Find us at edecdf.com slash radio or call us now at 805-222-4584. That's 805-222-4584. Radio listeners get 20% off your order. Winter has just begun, and are you already tired of being cold? How would you like to never be cold again? This is Dale with Fortress Clothing, and I'm here to tell you, you will never be cold again with Fortress. If you're tired of freezing your butt off, elk hunting, sitting in a tree stand, deer hunting, winter camping, fishing, ice fishing, no longer fear the cold. If you snowmobile, ski, snowboard, get Fortress. Sledding with the kids, shoveling the walks, shopping, or if you or your spouse get cold feet at home, get Fortress. If you're stuck outside working in the cold or find yourself in an emergency situation, get our winter bug out bag and you will never be cold again. Fortress is the answer, so quit complaining and go to FortressClothing.com. It's a mid-layer garment that goes with anything you want to wear. Enter coupon code RADIO and get 20% off any item. Go now while we still have inventory. FortressClothing.com Cancer categorizes over 100 diseases. Though we do not diagnose, treat, or cure cancer, GCN team is offering the Clemson University study where there was up to a 95% reduction in cancerous cells when exposed to a plant-derived mineral supplement. If you or a loved one are searching for answers to this horrifying disease, come to GCNteam.com or call 877-878-4203. We'll email you a copy for free. That's 877-878-4203. Hi, this is Bryce Abel. I'm the producer of Dark Skies, the co-author of AD After Disclosure, and you are listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. So as we wrapped up our last segment with Whitley Strieber, Chris was asking a long question with a comment. Whitley? Well, the question he was asking is basically... What can we do to take this whole subject out of pop culture and place it into the hands of the intellectual culture? And the answer is we can't. We can't do that. It's not doable. The visitors have to do it. If they want to and they feel a need to and that's something important to them, I have no idea. But what Supernatural and the book before it, Solving a Communion Enigma, do is they give a ground to the intellectual culture, which if you read through him, the two books, it's a blueprint of where to start with this. But nobody is going to do that unless something else happens. There has to be that tiny little bit of disclosure that I talked about earlier. And now, uh, instead of the, the media running to the White House and saying, what about the abductions, when uh, that will happen, But when it does happen, the answer can be, well, we don't know yet, but there are scientific and academic directions that we can take to help us find out. And we can understand this. And that's a beginning. If we make that little tiny bit of disclosure that Leslie Keene is so hoping for, and then this all unfolds, it's all going to unfold on our side of the fence. The visitors will remain entirely silent. They will be passive to this. They're not going to land on the White House lawn or go past in a flying saucer waving at people. (laughs) There might be an increase in presences where they show themselves in lights in the sky and whatnot. That's possible as we go along. But we have to take this. It's not going to be given to us. We have to go out there and take it. We have to go to the bodies and the minds of the close encounter witnesses and study them properly with the right kind of scientific approach. We have to go to the literature of the past and the descriptions dating all the way back to the beginning of history and reconceive those accurately and rebuild our understanding of what this presence is because it is natural. 
Whether it's aliens or something else, it is part of nature. It wouldn't be here if it wasn't. It couldn't be. And it is extraordinary in that it does extraordinary things. It has an extraordinary effect on our world, and it is extraordinarily important. So it's supernatural. What I'm hearing, Whitley, is is we are in some sense in the driver's seat. It's almost like the visitors have been banging on the, the big front door, and we've unlocked the cat door. <laughs> you right. know? Or well, they, it's, they, it's they, like uh, you know, the, the further down the line we get uh, in, in pop culture, you know, machinations of, of meme, per, uh, you know, scattering these sub memes all over the place. We have to be able to supply them with some sort of signal, some sort of communication yeah. that, hey, at least on some level, we're ready. And that's got to come from the control, t- control structure, whether it's academia, government, military, you know, the, the, the thinkers, the intelligentsia. You're saying that we need to have that acknowledgement. There. We have so to have it, the acknowledgement in order to move forward. Yeah, and so it's not so much disclosure that we need. We just need a simple acknowledgement. Well, yeah, I, I, it doesn't have to be big. It, it can be very tiny. It doesn't have to be. Leslie's right about that. I, I, if I'm right about what how she thinks this should unfold, it can be very tiny. But before Supernatural, there was nothing there. There was no place to go to for the intellectual and scientific communities. They didn't have anything to focus on. The book provides that focus, and it shows Jeff's work in it as a uh, as a in his comparative work that he does. He shows exactly how to work with this material from an academic standpoint. And if you read uh, Solving Communion Enigma and also some things that I say in Supernatural. There's a lot of information about just how the scientific community can go about looking at this from a scientific standpoint. Yeah, but you have to approach them with the proper languaging, with the proper gravitas, with the proper groundedness. That's not going to happen. For them to break through their – they've already judged this whole uh, thing as ridiculous. Well, exactly. And and they're going to continue to do that unless there is something – that changes. And that has to change. I can't make that change. That change has to come from the outside. It has to come from someone like President Hillary Clinton saying something, or as I said earlier, suggested earlier, someone in NASA admitting uh, uh, a little corner of the truth. From there, we would go. I mean, you'll have the the influence media like uh, the Washington Post and the New York Times uh, ignoring it as long as they can, because you know, they've been wrong for 50 years, and they're not going to want to be discredited in that way, and I don't blame them. <laughs> I don't think they really care at this point. No, no they, they would actually, care then, though. You know, they would care a lot. They you, well, they will in, in, in the final analysis, I would hope. But essentially what we're looking for is a straw that's going to break the camel's back. That's um, right. And that could and, be just a simple event statement by somebody – whether it's by design or inadvertently, that will then open up the floodgates. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a big guy. I mean, someone in the middle level of authority. It won't take much to open these floodgates right now because I know a lot of people in the scientific community who are aware that there is something real here and are only waiting for that straw to drop onto the camel's back before they go running to their granting authorities looking for money. (laughs) <laughs> and believe me, it's not. It is very close to happening. And what's holding the dam closed right now is it, it, two very simple and straightforward cultural artifacts. One is the United States government, and primarily the United States Air Force, does not want to admit what it believes, which is quite not correct, that it made a mistake in the past. Uh, that's number one. Number two, the media does not want to admit that it bought into that, into the lies. And uh, this is, they're supposed to be the guardians of truth, and they have been the guardians instead, in this case, of the biggest lie in human history. The Robertson panel did its job very well. Very well. I knew, you know, speaking of the Robertson panel, I knew Walter Orr Roberts. He was president emeritus of NOAA when I knew him, and he had been invited to be the chairman of Project Blue Book before, oh, what's his name, became the chairman of it. Hector. Yeah, yeah. In any case, he said he turned it down because it was obvious from the beginning when he started talking to the people in the Air Force that it was a foregone conclusion. There wasn't going, Project Blue Book 
he said as far as he was concerned, the, the, the preface to Project Blue Book had already been written before the committee was even convened, so he didn't even want to bother with it. The, a real career killer. <laughs> well, yeah, but here's the interesting thing. What the, what, the, what the text says and the conclusion in the frontispiece of the book are two different things. The frontispiece says they didn't find anything of any interest and uh, the Air Force is getting out of the business, which it did not do. But if you look at the text, you, found, you've, you discover that they found quite a few things of interest. And I'm yeah. sure there are more that aren't in the text. Right. Well, the, the publicized section uh, had 700 and 701, I think, 701, you know, unknowns as they were were, were labeled, which uh, is, you know, the um, title of Tracy Torme and James Fox's uh, project that's been uh, laboring along for quite a while for a documentary. Yeah. But, you know, nothing's going to basically change until – Somewhere that little chink of a door is open, and I'm hoping I, I think that the visitors have a lot to to do with whether or not that happens. I don't think that the I think that I don't think that there's some secret place somewhere that where the visitors sit down across a desk from some cat from the Air Force and say you're supposed to do this and you're supposed to do that and tell the president this. But I thought Valiant but I Thor do think already they did have that. Way, I do think they have ways of influencing us. We're going to influence our listeners in this fashion for a moment, then back with Whitley Streber. With Gene and Chris, you're in The Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. Graphic Converter is the image manipulation tool for the rest of us. It does not use any database. You get full control of all your files. Want to view the images of a folder? Drag it into Graphic Converter and a powerful browser opens up to show your image files. You could use it for slideshows. You could use it to import images from digital cameras or from scanners. Need to do some image editing? You can do that too in Graphic Converter. Also print catalogs. Convert from so many formats i can't even list them download now to see if graphic converter is good for you like one and a half million other users guess what you could save money when you buy graphic converter use the coupon code night owl use the coupon code night owl to get a special price for graphic converter go to lemkesoft.com that's l-e-m-k-e soft.com lemkesoft.com l-e-m-k-e soft.com my dad was 59 when he collapsed from a heart attack late last year. Just this past August was when we spread his ashes on the St. Croix River. I loved my dad, but boy was he stubborn. He hadn't been to the doctor in over 25 years. His excuse? He simply couldn't afford it. He wasn't a rich man by any means. At less than $107 per month, libertyoncall.org would have been the perfect alternative for my father. Don't wait. Go to libertyoncall.org right now for not just your sake, but for the sake of your loved ones. Again, that's libertyoncall.org. Owe $10,000 or more to the IRS? Get on board with the tax admiral. Don't pick on the IRS alone. I'll cut penalties and reduce your overall tax bill. Sometimes I can even get it zeroed out completely. We're an A-rated company helping people clean up their mess with the IRS. If you owe $10,000 or more, then call the tax admiral. Call 800-287-7180. Again, that's 800-287-7180. 800-287-7180. Paid non-attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-261-0937. That's 800-261-0937. Are you tired of commuting to a job that makes someone else rich? Working harder than ever, but getting nowhere? Do you hate spending hundreds of dollars every week on daycare? Having someone else raise your children? With our opportunities, you can start earning money as soon as next week. You get to be the boss, work from home, and live a happier life. 
At Be The Boss Network, you'll find hundreds of work-from-home opportunities that you can literally start today and be earning money as soon as next week. Go to freedom106.com and start earning money as soon as next week. You get to be the boss. Get out of the rat race. Work from home. Go to freedom106.com right now and change your life today. That's freedom, the number 106.com. Go to freedom106.com and start earning money as soon as next week. You be the boss. Go to freedom106.com. We use mobile devices right against our bodies every day, but growing scientific evidence has emerged showing serious health risks associated with exposure to EMF radiation emitted from these devices. The solution is Defender Shield, the most effective mobile radiation shielding ever developed. Defender Shield blocks virtually 100% of EMF radiation from cell phones, tablets, and laptops and starts at just $64.99. Buy now at DefenderShield.com. For 10% off, use promo code GCN. DefenderShield.com, the worldwide leader in mobile radiation shielding. This is Jacques Vallée, and you're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. We continue with Whitley Strieber, Gene Steinberg, Chris O'Brien, but one quick question, Whitley. You know, as far back as the 1950s, we had a promise of disclosure or some kind of revelation of something, and it never, ever, ever seems to happen. No. So what's happening now? Is this ever going to happen in our lifetimes? Well, where we are right now is this. We are on a runaway train to environmental collapse on a whole lot of different levels. And with it is going to, become, is going to come ungodly chaos in the human community across the planet. And in that context... I think it's quite possible that we will also end up one way or another discovering that the visitors are real or that something is very extraordinary is happening here. At the same time that our world is getting much smaller because it's the environment is collapsing around our ears, it is going to be getting much larger because we are going to be realizing that we are actually embedded in a much larger, much older, and vastly conscious reality, which we knew nothing about or, or have we, we have been misinterpreting and trying to understand throughout all of our history. And there will come at the same time two things, extraordinary upheaval in our societies because of what is happening physically in the world around us and an extraordinary new insight into what we actually are. It is the energy of this dichotomy of these two things happening at the same time is going to be absolutely amazing. And it's quite possible that the, that the magnetic field of the planet will go into a state of chaos then too. You talk about interesting times that it'd be hard to think of times that could be more interesting than what appears to be on its way. I absolutely agree. In fact, my recent book, Stalking the Herd, looks at the role of cattle. We were talking about the Mithraic cults and uh, you know bull worship and, and cattle worship earlier. We just briefly touched on that. I've written an, an entire book looking at cattle as being, besides humans, the most detrimental environmental force on the uh, on the planet, and how this incestuous, almost symbi symbiotic relationship with cattle is, if, if we can just solve that one issue uh, of how cattle is degradating the environment, uh, you know that that's going to go a long way to to help things. But I, it, this brings me up to the whole um, idea that. Perhaps the visitors could be some sort of collective um, sort of imperative that is being manifested by all of us slowly building through uh, the millennia um, to get us to get out of the cradle of humanity here on this planet and to go out and seed uh, the cosmos and, and to spread like a, a dandelion uh, being blown off into the wind and all these little parachutes go out, that we need to somehow get off this planet 
because we, we're like a virus to the planet. We have wonderful bio, biodiversity here. We have, have this wonderful ecosystem that is just by every day we lose a species. Uh, on well, the yeah. <laughs> and, and so perhaps we are collectively manifesting this symbiotic relationship with the visitors who are helping draw us out into the cosmos to get us out there to expand uh, humanity out in, you know, away from, you know, from the nest, if it, you know, for lack of a better term. Well, exactly. And if you look at, at uh, people always say, oh, I don't believe in astrology. It's ridiculous. But somebody built a calendar, a long count calendar that's called the Zodiac. And whoever did this understood a whole lot about the evolution of societies. For example, we've, we're coming out of the age of Pisces. Pisces is a little fish swimming in, in a stream, it's swimming in the water. The fish is protected. Everything the fish needs is given to it by the water. The fish is safe. The fish is precise. He's bound by the rules. He is, in other words, he's a good Christian. He's a good Muslim. He's a good Hindu. The little fish is safe in the waters of, re of his reality. Then along comes Aquarius, and we're moving into the age of Aquarius right now. The water's poured out, and the little fish ends up on dry land. He's got gills. He doesn't have any feet. How can he survive? Well, we're the fish. We're just in the process of getting poured out. At the same time, it also can be said that this planet is a mother, and the mother is very pregnant with her child, us. Her womb, the waters of her womb are about to burst, and when they do, out we come, and then what do we do? Well, I can tell you this, her waters will burst. There is no question whatsoever about that. We will not stave off the environmental changes that are coming. I have known that since the 80s, since the early 80s when I wrote yeah. Nature's End, and I have been saying since then, we need to accept this and we need to plan for it. Instead, we divide it into two camps, in each case, crazy, but in slightly different ways. The environmentalist camp saying that we can change, we can prevent this from happening altogether if we just change our, uh, our ways of living in mm -hmm. profound and unworkable ways. Yeah, it's inevitable. Not true. It's absolutely not true. They, then the other side saying it isn't happening at all. If we'd planned for it, it would be a, a smoother transition. But as it stands, the baby's coming out, and the baby ain't got anything going for him. Let's hope we have a midwife. Let's hope that's what the visitors are. Ah, that, that's a really good analogy. Um, so where do you come down on the whole, you know, James Lovelock um, idea of Gaia being a superorganism, some sort of a, a force that's compelling us collectively to get off planet, to go out and see the cosmos. Do you feel that there's a, a relationship between the superorganism of this, you know, semi-closed system called Earth or Gaia and the visitors? Do you think that they're working uh, together uh, in concert? Or do you think that this is something that is uh, the visitors are coming in and doing sort of damage control? I don't know what it means in this sense, whether or not it's okay for us to go extinct. This planet has been evolving for 5 billion years. For a substantial portion of that time, something on the order of 300 million years and possibly a, a good bit longer, life has been evolving on this planet. And it has been uh, blown out of the water many times. Uh, there have been quite a few major extinction well, 95 events. 95% of species have, have gone extinct, right? I, I think it's even higher than oh, it's that. it's 98% of species have gone extinct. Yep. And when you find, well, well, who hasn't gone extinct? You know, then you get the cockroaches and the various bacteria and things. The ones who haven't Richard. gone extinct are the ones who go way under the radar. We are big and we are vulnerable. We're the kind of species that goes extinct most quickly because of our size. The reason we didn't go extinct 
during whatever happened about 15,000 years ago is that we were smart enough to hide. And we, and, and, and we, we, we went into the, to, to that upheaval naked and living in the trees. We came out of it clothed and running across the, the, the veldt with weapons in our hands. What will happen this time? Because it's going to happen again. We're going into this clothed with weapons in our hands. What will we come out? What state will we be in when we come out? Or is this the end for mankind in the physical world? I don't know the answer to that question. However, I do know this. The physical world is only an incident in the life of a human being. Only an incident. And it may be that we are finished with this type of incident. Hmm. We, we're going to go on and do something else in some other way. It sounds like transformation to me, <laughs> ideally. Well, well, well let's Willie, hope. Here's, here's a good question. Um, there's been kind of an upsurge in interest in ethogens and uh, halluc hall uh, hallucinogenic substances. And, and um, of course, the work of Terrence McKenna. Uh, you know, we're looking at uh, Graham Hancock. Well, I, I just want to get your your take on what role do you think psychedelics could play to help speed up any sort of communication or establish a, a firmer foundation for a bridge between the visitors and ourselves? And we'll get to that as soon as we get back from break. With Gene and Chris, you're in The Paracast. <laughs> listening to GCN. Visit GCNlive.com today. First came Attack of the Rockoids, and it was a critically acclaimed success. And now there is the coming of the Protectors. A former military intelligence man is contacted by a space woman in a dream. A dream that turns out to be a nightmare, because evil forces on our distant planet are planning to conquer the Earth. This is gripping science fiction of the classic kind. Attack of the Rockoids and the coming of the Protectors. Find out more at Rockoids.com. That's Rockoids, R-O-C-K-O-I-D-S, dot com. As you know, neighbors, web hosting can be pretty cheap, but not all hosting is the same. DreamHost wins best of awards year after year. You get unlimited disk space, unlimited bandwidth, and even the low-cost plans put your sites on high-performance SSDs. Want to know more about what DreamHost has to offer? Go to technightowl.com slash host. Once again, that's technightowl.com slash host. Are you worried about your mom or dad living alone in their house? Hi, I'm Joan London. Listen, I know how difficult it is to find senior care for someone you love. That's why I recommend a free service called A Place for Mom. They are the nation's largest senior living referral service. Call A Place for Mom today. To receive free information on senior living communities in your area, call A Place for Mom at 1-800-704-6182. A Place for Mom offers free, one-on-one -on -one advice from local advisors and a personalized list of senior living communities you can visit. If you have questions about senior care for your mom or dad, there's a place for answers, a place for mom. Call A Place for Mom in the next 10 minutes to get your free ebook on financing senior care as well as free information on senior living communities in your area. Call 1-800-704-6182. That's 1-800-704-6182. Welcome back to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. And now, here's Gene Steinberg. So, a long question there from Chris about the influence of hallucinogenics. It takes me back to the 60s. I don't want to get into that into too much detail. <laughs> well, <laughs> I have... Go Personally, ahead. never done hallucinogenics or anything. I've never even smoked marijuana. I was in a room once where people were smoking grass, and it made me dizzy, and I've, it was not comfortable. And so I've just never gotten involved in that. And 
I would think that actually I would need to, considering what's happened to me, I why would I spend the money on hallucinogens? But uh, the you can just grow them in your closet. Well, they came out of my closet on their own. <laughs> I didn't need to grow them. But uh, uh, in any case, what worries me about the use of hallucinogens, and I'm limited in my ability to respond because I have never done it. I'm, you know, I'm like a a priest advising someone on marriage, uh, you know, here. I would think that there is the danger that you may be looking at events that are exclusively inside the mind that the drug has generated, and you can never know whether or not that's true. There was a some very interesting research done at the University of New Mexico, I'm sure you're familiar with it. You've Rick probably, Strassman, of course. Rick Strassman, yeah, of course. And you've probably even had him on the show. Or, in any case, one of the conclusions he initially came to was that the people in his uh, program who were taking high doses of DMT under his supervision in a federally sanctioned program, the first one in many years, were actually observing the unfolding of another real world, another presumably a parallel universe or something. It's fascinating, and maybe it's true. I had an experience one time that may suggest the presence of a parallel universe, and also much more than that, because this was a real mind bender. I woke up in the middle of the night, and you know about out-of-body experiences and Bob Monroe journeys out of the body and so forth. Well, the body was out of me. I was in bed, but there was no one there. It was just the bed. I was out of my body, but my body had gotten up and left, leaving me behind. My consciousness was in the bed, but not my body. That's and I scary. Thought, wow. Oh, wow. Now I've, this is really a reversal. I've lost my body. What am I going to do? Where has it gone? And I thought I'd better look for it. And I got out of the bed. I felt like I was getting up, but I was invisible. I couldn't even see my own body. It didn't exist physically. And as soon as I tried to move, I immediately began to go down. I went down through the ceiling and there was my body. My son was asleep in his bed and there was a little boy there. His little friend was with him. They were in our country house. They were in the bedroom below ours. And he's sitting there up in the bed, looking up at my body and they're talking then I'm in my body. I have no idea. He's looking at me expectingly, expectantly like he expects me to say something else. I don't know what to say. So my son is now awake. And so I say, well, good night, boys. And I go back upstairs. And I sit on the bedside for a while thinking, what in the world was that about? Morning comes. I wake up. I tell Ann. I told her everything that happened. I, made a, I was religious about it. And uh, I told her all the details. And we go down to make breakfast. We have no idea. We're beyond saying, oh, it must have been some kind of a dream. We, we just, we just uh, at this point, we're just sort of rolling with this stuff. And I don't, I wonder what the boys will say. And I don't even, I'm thinking about how do I bring this up? And, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to say something that will confuse them or frighten them. And I don't want to say something that will cause them to, to try to pull my leg or, you know, so I'm sort of turning that over in my mind. All of a sudden their door bursts open. They come running out and say, yelling, Whitley came down through the ceiling in the middle of the night. And we're fairly floored. And they tell us that they, they heard this noise. And then suddenly I came down through the ceiling, my body. I presumably followed it a little later. So, I said to them, well, what happened? And they couldn't remember. We talked about something, but we don't, they don't remember what it was. Then, that day, I'm to take the little boy to his, meet his father in Paramus, New Jersey, on Route 17. He's got a house in the Delaware Water Gap, and we meet there to exchange kids. It's summertime, and to go back and forth between the country houses. So we're going along, and he's sitting in the parking lot of a diner. I see his truck as we, we go past. We have to go to a little overpass and then back up. It's a divided highway. I've done it a million times. It's no big deal. I go into the exit to the overpass and it's not an overpass. It's an underpass. It goes down. 
And I think, what in the world? This isn't even, where am I? I've never seen this before, and I know this area like the back of my hand. I, I get off at the next exit immediately because I have no idea how this happened or where I am. We're in this very strange, extremely odd neighborhood. Big trees, big lawns, uh, and these low sort of sandstone buildings way back up in the lawns with serpents uh, in, uh, and bas relief on their surfaces and low uh, uh, arched doorways. And the little boy starts trying to open the locks. It's automatic locks in the, and he keeps flipping his lock open and I keep closing it because I'm afraid he's going to jump out because he's obviously reacting to this bizarre situation in panic. I drive around helplessly in this neighborhood thinking, what the hell am I up against here? Until I finally see in the distance a uh, rough area, open area. I drive toward it. I can see cars beyond it. I drive off through the rough area. The cars turn out to be on Route 80, about 20 miles from where we left the highway. I get on Route 80. I get back on 17. I go back up 17. By this time, the father is standing in the, in the bed of his pickup looking for us because, you know, he saw us pass and we never came back. The boy so far has said nothing. I have said nothing. The father is an extreme skeptic. I really hope that the boy doesn't say anything about this to his dad. He jumps out of the car and goes running across the, the parking lot yelling, Daddy, Daddy, Whitley just took me on a trip through the Twilight Zone. <laughs> <laughs> so I leave you with this. We looked all over for that neighborhood, the two, the four of us, and never found it. Yeah. I leave you with this. You talk wow. about different worlds. Rick Strassman's uh, subjects' experiences, parallel universes. We live in the middle of a great unknown. Ain't that cool? Ain't that very, very cool? That's very cool. Um, it sounds like you don't need to do uh, hallucinogens to uh, to get uh, from here to there. But, Hell, uh, yeah. No, I don't. And you can't. You can't afford enough hallucinogens to get a jeep into this into the into a parallel universe anyway. That's. Uh, I mean, remember, bizarre. we went in a car. We were in a car. I'm surprised that uh, your your son's friend's parents would even allow a sleepover at your house. <laughs> well, there were some that never came back. But this this the dad would take the boys to his house, and he would explain to them how Whitley is. He would never actually say I'm a nut, but he would say, "Well, Whitley's got a very big imagination." And you have to understand that in order to be with Whitley. And he would he would try to help my son understand this, too, that I was not telling the truth, but I also wasn't lying because I believed it. What? Unfortunately, that's not the case. There's too much. There's just too much. I'm sitting here with an implant in my ear. And I'm sorry. It's not a, it's not an illusion. Okay. Oh, that's a lot to go through, especially wow, that's, wow. if you're a parent and you become friends with somebody and your kids spend time with them and all sorts of weird stuff happens, like dogs start barking in the background. It gets to be pretty <laughs> crazy. But We've got Whitley was... Streber, co-author of The Supernatural with Gene and with Chris for three more segments. You're in The Paracast. <laughs> If you're fascinated by UFOs, ancient aliens, archaeological mysteries, ghost hunting, Atlantis, and any other paranormal topic as we are, be sure to check out apmagazine.info each month. Since 1985, it has presented the latest research by top researchers like Andrew Collins, Brad Steiger, and many others, and contains interviews with such leading personalities as Jacques Vallée. Check, click on one of their banners and check out apmagazine.info. As you know, neighbors, web hosting can be pretty cheap, but not all hosting is the same. DreamHost wins best of awards year after year. You get unlimited disk space, unlimited bandwidth, and even the low-cost plans put your sites on high-performance SSDs. Want to know more about what DreamHost has to offer? Go to technightowl.com slash host. 
Once again, that's technightowl.com slash host. Hi, Peter Vaccaro for ParanormalDate.com. Are you looking for love in all the wrong places? Now you have a chance to change that by signing up for free at ParanormalDate.com. This incredible dating site puts people of like minds together. People who are interested in the strange, the unusual, mysteries, ghosts, UFOs, and the afterlife, and so much more. ParanormalDate.com was developed for you, people seeking a viable alternative to the other dating services. You can join for free by going to ParanormalDate.com, and if you decide you like it and want to connect with people, use the code GEORGE for a substantial discount. Mark Rawlings, president of ParanormalDate.com, says so many people hunger to share their experiences about the paranormal, the unexplainable, or the afterlife, and so much more, and this is the source for them to meet and share that common interest. So sign up for free at ParanormalDate.com, ParanormalDate.com, and use the code GEORGE if you decide to connect with someone you like. So you've got to take a state construction license exam or certification. Can't decide on what books or what chapters to study? Discover right now how you can eliminate unnecessary books and wasted study time. At ContractorExam.com, our study materials zero in on state-required test topics in an effective, multiple-choice format. So whether you're a plumber, electrician, general contractor, or other construction-related trade, ContractorExam.com will help get you prepared. Visit us at www.ContractorExam.com today. For over five years, you've been hearing about the Berkey guy, so you may know a few things about him. For example, you are well aware of the superior quality and effectiveness of Berkey water filters and accessories. But did you know the Berkeys have had independent lab tests done to prove just how effective they are? It's true, and he can email you the test results. Just visit GoBerkey.com. You may also know that the Berkey guy has helped tens of thousands of people get better prepared. Now here's something you may not know. GoBerkey.com has amazing specials and deals all the time on a wide variety of survival and preparedness products. Most ready to ship same day. Visit the Berkey guy at GoBerkey.com and be sure to click the red Products on Sale Now button. You can always call toll-free 877-886-3653. Again, that's 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com, home of the Berkey guy. Owe $10,000 or more to the IRS? Get on board with the tax admiral. Don't pick on the IRS alone. I'll cut penalties and reduce your overall tax bill. Sometimes I can even get it zeroed out completely. We're an A-rated company helping people clean up their mess with the IRS. If you owe $10,000 or more, then call the tax admiral. Call 800-287-7180. Again, that's 800-287-7180. 800-287-7180. We'd like to hear from you. If you have a comment or question about the Paracast, send it to news at theparacast.com. That's news at theparacast.com. And don't forget to visit our famous Paracast community forums at forum.theparacast.com. We have Whitley Streber. We're discussing a lot of really strange experiences and driving into an alternate reality is certainly one. Of course, the other crazy phenomenon we get with mostly in connection with abductions is missing time. But have you, Whitley Streeper, ever heard of an episode where you have gained time, where you seem to reach a place much faster than you should? Um, nothing in my experience comes to mind. All right. And the reason I mention that is one of our former co-hosts talked of an experience where he and his friend came home from Boston to New York City, a drive of, you know, four hours and some odd minutes, and it got there in two hours, just to mention that in passing. Uh, you know, I'm sure, you know, if Annie was still with me, God bless my beautiful wife, she probably would be able to tell you 10 stories about that from the letters she read. I know that she's mentioned something like that once or twice to me, so I know there are stories out there. But I don't recall that ever happening to me. It may have. I don't know. It, 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 if it did, it didn't make much of an impression. Yeah, I, I've had in my personal process of uh, being an investigator and interviewing people and fielding um, reports, I've had two or three examples of that sort of a compressed time where people arrive in an in impossible short time 
uh, compared to a, you know, a, a regular uh, trip from, you know, point A to point B. But this kind of brings me to another area, which I think is is a little bit lacking in the literature. You don't see much uh, mention about uh, the connection or potential connection with the occult and the visitors. For instance, um, the Alamantra working uh, done by Alistair Crowley back in, I think, 1919, where he manifested through a series of very complicated rituals, uh, allegedly, a small diminutive being uh, named Lamb, who, as far as I know, uh, that drawing that he did of Lamb is the earliest depiction of what we now commonly refer to as an alien gray, all the way back in 1919. What role do you think the occult plays in any of this? Do you think that there's any sort of credence to uh, Jack Parsons and L. Ron Hubbard doing the Babylon working in in the Mojave in 46, opening up a portal, allowing uh, the visitors to come through en masse, uh, for instance? Uh, Where do you come down on the occult involvement? Uh, Well, I think from my experience that if you show an interest in the visitors in the right place and time, they may respond. But uh, I think that we make a grave mistake when we assume too much about why they responded. In other words, when you say a loaded word like the occult, then you immediately open up a whole phenomenology which is just that. It's a phenomenology. It's not necessarily reflective of reality at all. And he saw something that he drew a picture of. And I've seen things that I've had pictures drawn of that look similar. Does that mean we saw the same thing or that using occult practices, I might be able to conjure the visitors? Well, actually, yes, it does. And for the reason I stated in the beginning, if you're in the right place and it's the right time and you do something indicating an interest in them, they might show up. I mean, John D. had similar experience in a graveyard. And the visitors to this day and at our cabin are heavily involved with the dead. So, uh, yeah, it's all of a piece. But don't assume, I think it's wrong to assume that because of the fact that you can occasionally draw their interest with occult rituals, that that's somehow or another means that the occult, the whole, the, all of the occult beliefs are true. It doesn't. It only means that you were in the right place at the right time making a noise that they noticed. Well, you've mentioned uh, several times now a uh, connection with the dead. Now, yeah. this is something that we, we discussed um, uh, in our last show with Eric uh, Ouellette, um, the author of Illuminations, which I, I highly recommend, as I do your book, Sup- The Supernatural. Um, the, we're, we're kind of going down the same sort of uh, parallel track here. And you mentioned the dead. How Explain your intuition about a connection with... Um, so-called um, disincarnate past beings, uh, you know, the, the whole idea of ghosts and that whole thing, and how it may be connected or appears to be connected to the visitors. And he walked out of her office one afternoon during the time when we were getting letters in in huge bags from the post office, and she and her secretary at that time, Lori Barnes, were reading them all. She walked out and she said, Whitley, this has something to do with what we call death. And that was the, a critical insight because it, it led us into some fascinating material because she also had the ability to we, – we, we decided we would try having groups up at the cabin because we thought that the visitors were showing up there so much. Why wouldn't they show up with people, other people there besides us? I mean, you know, it, we, we, so we decided to give it a try. Anne had an uncanny ability to know who the visitors would react to and who they wouldn't. And she picked people seemingly completely out of a hat. Raven Dana uh, was one, uh, Laurie Barnes, another. Laurie, I mean, she 
how she found them, I don't know. But she did, and she said, well, let's invite Raven up to the cabin. Let's invite Lori, other people. She identified other people from time to time, and we would have these groups up there. And I'll give you an example. One of the groups at the cabin, uh, they're sleeping upstairs in the living room, are four people on cots and uh, so forth, sleeping in quotes. Downstairs in the basement, there are two people who really are sleeping, a couple who are not married, but they are going to be, and so they're in the private basement bedroom. Here's what happens during the night. Upstairs, there is a magazine editor who is promised, he is a very editor of a very prominent magazine, to write of his experience in the cabin if the visitors show up. So he's there, and they do. The little blue guys, I call kobolds in, the, in Supernatural, show up. And they jump around in the living room, and it's dark, but pe the people can still see them. And nobody can move, but people, everyone can still talk during this ex exhibition. And it is literally that, an exhibition. They are literally walking and jumping around like, as one of them put it in, in his, uh, uh, the story he wrote about this, they're jumping around like uh, a bunch of acrobats. Meanwhile, in the basement... The couple wakes up, and what do they see? Standing at the foot of the bed is an old friend of theirs who died in 1983. This is now 1988, I guess, in the Mexico City earthquake of that year. This is a and good time to have a cliffhanger, right? The person appears in front of their bed, and we'll continue our next segment with Whitley Strieber and Gene and Chris. You're in The Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. You haven't experienced yogurt until you've tried a Mossy, embodying health and flavor in a true whole milk, green-fed dairy beverage. Every sip pays homage to our old world cows and the ancient culturing methods their milk benefits from. With over 30 probiotics, a Mossy's undeniably nutritious, refined, cultured sensation bolsters your health and awakens your passion for dairy. A Mossy's so good, and you need to try it. Contact your Longevity distributor or call 877-878-4203 or go to GCNteam.com. It's about time something new came along for better selling and buying online. And I found it. What now, Marge? It's buysellmakeoffer.com. Never heard of it. It's a brand new company. That's why you've never heard of it. It's the newest and best way to sell any products online. I did all the research. Sell my car? Yes. Our home? Yep. My golf bag? Your golf clubs. All of them. How about your purse collection hoard? Hey, now. You said any product. Right. I did. Hmm. We get 30 days free. Really? Packages starting from only $7.95. And buy, sell, make, offer.com will never charge item fees ever. Mm. Never. And this is cool. Listen to this. You can even use Skype or video to show your items. That's cool. Yes. All we have to do is go to the website, sign up, and then load our stuff to sell. I love this site. Buy, sell, make, offer.com. Buy, sell, make, offer.com. You got it? Buy, sell, make, offer.com. Buy, sell, makeoffer.com. Better selling, better buying. By now, you know that wireless technology like cell phones do, in fact, pose dangers to the health and privacy of everyone. Blocket Pocket's wide range of products are unmatched in providing the protection you deserve. No scare tactics, just common sense. BlockitPocket.com offers quality, American-made options to alleviate and eliminate these invisible dangers. Learn more at BlockitPocket.com or call 888-315-9618. BlockitPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. This is a healthcare alert from the Pain Relief Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one suffers from knee, back, shoulder, or ankle pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, we've got great news. You don't have to suffer any longer. 
you can immediately qualify for a pain relieving brace at little or no cost to you by calling our 24-7 pain relief hotline at 866-389-0620. Delivery is free and all paperwork is handled for you. If you are on Medicare and have knee, back, shoulder, or ankle pain, don't wait. You can qualify to immediately receive a pain relieving brace at little or no cost by calling our 24-7 pain hotline now at 866-389-0620. Our representatives are standing by 24-7 to take your call and rush you your pain relieving brace at little or no cost to you. Shipping is free and all paperwork is handled for you. Just call 866-389-0620. That's 866-389-0620. Again, 866-389-0620. No other network provides the level of customer service we do. When it comes to radio advertising, we are your one-stop shop. And no matter how big or small your business is, we can help. Email us at advertise at GCNlive.com and an experienced advertising executive will help you take the first step towards driving more customers to your business or website. Advertise at GCNlive.com. Easy, affordable, effective. This is Jerome Clark, author of the UFO Encyclopedia and other books. You're listening to the Paracast. Whitley, I know our listeners are waiting with bated breath to hear more, please. Okay, so they, and, and the woman says she looks perfectly normal. She's solid. She doesn't look like a ghost or anything. And she says, I want to tell you that I'm all right, which was the universal message. We got that again and again and again. Um, and the next day, everybody compares notes, and it's an incredible event. The magazine editor chickens out and won't publish it because he says it would ruin his career. So it doesn't get published, and the visitors, I think maybe they showed up because they wanted that published, and uh, maybe I'll, they'll be angry at me, but they never showed any anger at me. In any case, that was one example. Another example, another group is at the cabin. Laurie Barnes is among them. Draven Dana is among them in this group. Laurie's out walking in the afternoon on the road in front of our cabin. And suddenly there's her brother standing there. And he says, Laurie, and she says, Gene, or whatever his name was. I'm, I'm not sure I remember his name. Are you, what are you doing here? Because she, he had disappeared 20 years before and no one, the FBI finally closed the case and just left him as a missing person. And he says, I want you to know that I'm all right. And at first she thinks she doesn't realize he's even a ghost, if you could call him that, because he's so solid looking. And she starts to tell him to come down to the cabin with her. But he, as she walks toward him, he floats back into the woods and just disappears. She comes back to the cabin totally rattled and tells this story. Anne immediately says, the visitors will show up tonight, I would think. Which happens. Now, this time, we have a low-light camera on a hallway in the, uh, downstairs. There's a filmmaker and his wife in a bed in the living room. It's a much more organized situation because I want badly to get something on video. Because in those days, you know, if you'd gotten some video imagery, it's not so easy to fake back then. Right. And so... Uh, there's no CGI or anything. So, you know, we're doing our best. What happens is this. In the middle of the night, Raven Dana is waked up by someone punching her shoulder, which is the way the visitors used to always wake me up. They do it differently now, but they did it that way then. And uh, she sees this, what she initially thinks is a raccoon on the bed because of the big eyes. But then she thinks, wait a minute, the windows screens are all screwed closed here. It couldn't have come in the window. And then she realizes what it is. And she hears it either in her head or physically, she's not sure which, as I recall, ask, what can I do to help you? And she says, you could walk down that hall, which, of course, would be in the, in the camera. It goes out the door this little being with the big eyes, the classic gray. 
the next thing, Laurie Barnes and another woman are in the next bedroom and they are waked up by it the same way and they have a brief exchange with it. Then they end up waking up the next morning with no idea of how they even went to sleep. Same with Laurie. What happens in the living room is the following. About five o'clock in the morning, the filmmaker, who is you know, a typical skeptical, super skeptical Hollywood guy, wakes up and sees beside the bed this little man with a huge head staring down at him. It scares the hell out of him. The little man turns into the Egyptian god Horus. Oh, boy, that's scary. <laughs> yeah. At that point, he disappears. But then my son and I, who have been sleeping out in the woods because the house is so full of people, come up across a little hill, and we see the deck and then the backyard and beyond the backyard are woods. Out the front door and down the deck comes a translucent hooded figure about three or four feet tall, about four feet tall, goes across, races off across the front yard and goes darting away through the woods, missing the trees at breakneck speed. Incredible to see. We go in. The filmmaker and his wife are both on their feet. They've been hit by a tremendous burst of heat. They tell this story. This is the end of this encounter. Now, what happened. It is a truly complex series of encounters at that cabin. And there were others as well. I won't go on. I could go on all afternoon, but I won't do that because, I mean, it's pointless. You've had a number of uh, visitors over the years to the cabin. And um, this question comes from Raven's Fee, who's been a poster at forum.theparacast.com for the last couple of years. And she's wondering about a story that she heard that William S. Burroughs, of all people, once came out to your cabin where the events described in communion took place up outside of New Paltz in the hope of replicating your experiences. Did he really visit? And what yeah, happened when William when came he, a number of times? We knew him and uh, I liked him a lot. We, we used to visit him in Kansas City and uh, Lawrence also. When he was out there, he was out there twice, I believe. And nothing happened to him, but some things happened to the assistant he had out there, some fairly minor stuff, little poltergeisty kind of things. They never had an encounter, unfortunately. I wish they had had. William wanted it so badly, but there's nothing I could do. Annie made him a beautiful pot roast and a magnificent chocolate cake because, <laughs> you know, he wasn't doing heavy drugs anymore, but he was doing a lot of marijuana and the cake was really appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> he would have whipped out his Glock and tried to take it out. <laughs> no, he hated Glocks. Are you kidding? Oh. <laughs> we used to fight about guns. I used to torture him. Oh, he by, was a Smith & Wesson guy? Or? Yeah, well, he didn't like Glocks, and I used to talk to him about how, you know, I would say, you know, I love Glocks. They're so light and so great. And, oh, Glocks, I, why do you always, are you trying to torture me? <laughs> you know, he was not a Glock fan. Okay. Well, here's another question. Uh, we're, we're trying to, Whitley, you have no idea how many questions uh, your you know, announcement of your visit has prompted here at forum.theparacast.com. But Sue is interested. She asked, do you think the narrative of the other, as told by yourself and other experiencers in the media today, have or will ultimately result in the shaping or emergence of broader social movements or institutions? And would that be a good thing or a bad thing? This kind of harkens back to the idea of, you know, the whole idea of uh, evolution of maybe a 21st century religion supplanting the um, outmoded control structures of, of religious uh, institutions in the past. We don't need another religion. We've done that too much already. And part of what Supernatural is about is to try to deflect that because it could Good happen. answer. It could happen. It definitely could happen. It, well, it worries me a lot because let's end that part of history and get past those that tendency on our part to connect dots that do not actually necessarily have lines between them. Right. Like the, the, we talked about the occult a little while ago and how if Aleister Crowley conjured a visitor up in an occult ritual, then they must be demons. Uh, let's make the cut, as Jeff, as I said earlier, and as Jeff says in, says in yeah. the book, let's not do that anymore. 
And, and, and that doesn't mean I'm in league with demons to anybody who's listening to this who is in, of that ilk. It means that you should be in league with yourself and ask a few questions about the world around you rather than indulging assumptions that may or may not be true. So in other words, what you're saying is any sort of uh, colonization of ideas, spirit, um, inclination – may be detrimental, that this ultimately is a personal uh, connection to the others. and that, No, uh, I'm not saying that at all. Not okay, at all. okay, well, we'll correct me. Before we have the answer, let's just continue and wrap up the segment. We have one more left. We have Whitley Strieber. He's author with Jeffrey Kripal of the Supernatural. We'll tell you a bit more about the book and how to get a copy in our final segment with Gene and Chris. You're in The Paracast. Thank you for listening to GCN. Be sure to visit GCNlive.com today. Graphic Converter is the image manipulation tool for the rest of us. It does not use any database. You get full control of all your files. Want to view the images of a folder? Drag it into Graphic Converter and a powerful browser opens up to show your image files. You could use it for slideshows. You could use it to import images from digital cameras or from scanners. Need to do some image editing? You can do that too in Graphic Converter. Also print catalogs convert from so many formats I can't even list them. Download now to see if Graphic Converter is good for you, like one and a half million other users. Guess what? You could save money when you buy Graphic Converter. Use the coupon code NIGHTOWL. Use the coupon code NIGHTOWL to get a special price for Graphic Converter. Go to LemkeSoft.com. That's L-E-M-K-E Soft.com. LemkeSoft.com. L-E-M-K-E Soft.com. My dad was 59 when he collapsed from a heart attack late last year. Just this past August was when we spread his ashes on the St. Croix River. I loved my dad, but boy was he stubborn. He hadn't been to the doctor in over 25 years. His excuse? He simply couldn't afford it. He wasn't a rich man by any means. At less than $107 per month, libertyoncall.org would have been the perfect alternative for my father. Don't wait. Go to libertyoncall.org right now for not just your sake, but for the sake of your loved ones. Again, that's libertyoncall.org. We use mobile devices right against our bodies every day, but growing scientific evidence has emerged showing serious health risks associated with exposure to EMF radiation emitted from these devices. The solution is Defender Shield, the most effective mobile radiation shielding ever developed. Defender Shield blocks virtually 100% of EMF radiation from cell phones, tablets, and laptops and starts at just $64.99. Buy now at DefenderShield.com. For 10% off, use promo code GCN. DefenderShield.com, the worldwide leader in mobile radiation shielding. Are your Google search results killing you? Unflattering content in blogs, news articles, online reviews, social media, or other sources can jeopardize your reputation, your business, and your livelihood. Let Reputation.com help. Our patented technology will make the truth about you more visible while pushing down unwanted negative content. Improve your Google search results. Call Reputation.com at 1-800-831-0771 for a free consultation. That's 800-831-0771. Winter has just begun, and are you already tired of being cold? How would you like to never be cold again? This is Dale with Fortress Clothing, and I'm here to tell you, you will never be cold again with Fortress. If you're tired of freezing your butt off, elk hunting, sitting in a tree stand, deer hunting, winter camping, fishing, ice fishing, no longer fear the cold. If you snowmobile, ski, snowboard, get Fortress. Sledding with the kids, shoveling the walks, shopping, or if you or your spouse get cold feet at home, get Fortress. If you're stuck outside working in the cold or find yourself in an emergency situation, get our winter bug out bag and you will never be cold again. Fortress is the answer, so quit complaining and go to FortressClothing.com. It's a mid-layer garment that goes with anything you want to wear. Enter coupon code RADIO and get 20% off any item. Go now while we still have inventory. FortressClothing.com 
Paid non-attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24-7. Call 800-261-0937. That's 800-261-0937. Hi, this is Joshua P. Warren, author of The Poor Man's Paranormal, and you're listening to the Paracast, the gold standard of paranormal radio. Chris, you sound much calmer this time. Whitley, you were about to provide an answer. Yeah, let's try to look at this objectively, and we can objectively. It is a social force. It is also part of the physical, of the natural world, not necessarily the physical world, the natural world in some way that we do not yet understand. Rather than assuming it's something, a personal thing, or that it has reference to some idea about it that we've had in the past, let's use our tools of analysis at every level and figure out some way of looking at it that is consistent and, above all, real. Because so far, we've got a lot of unreality and suppositions going on. Angels, demons, gods, devils, aliens, who knows? Interdimensionals, that's another one of these meaningless words that people use all the time. Who knows what is objectively true, but something is. That's the whole point of supernatural. It's natural. They are part of nature, just like we are. Let's find out what that means objectively. Finally, step past the history of religions and begin a new history of a new kind of human experience. <laughs> I'm all for that. <laughs> yeah, of course you are. But, you know, who cares? You go into a bookstore, you will not find Supernatural. You will find, if you ask the publisher, that it's selling very poorly, if at all. I mean, there's, you know, 23 people out there have read it. And why is that? Because it doesn't play to anybody's cherished beliefs. Right. The alien abductee, no. The religious extremists, no. The people who will, people want things to play to their belief systems. And this doesn't do that. Because it doesn't do it, it's not going to be popular. But it's not there to be popular. It's there to be used if the visitors decide to open the door a little bit more. Okay. Let's end that part of history and start a new part of history, a part of history in which we address this unknown objectively, and we begin to see it as insofar as we can in a terminology that is at last free of suppositions and superstitions. I, I should point out you were mentioning very briefly, this is not necessarily on the bestseller list, and I'm looking at Amazon, and I think of the time I used to write computer instruction books, and I think they did a tiny bit better. Yeah, it, oh, it's, this isn't going to be on the bestseller list. Uh, this is not going to be anywhere. And yet, <laughs> But of course, if, if something changes, if, if the book does its job, which is not to be read by a, a lot of people who it who won't read it because it doesn't serve their exist pre-existing belief systems. Uh, if it does its job and does provide the ground for the visitors that I'm quite certain that they need and are looking for, then in, in the end, it will be on the bestseller list, believe me. But, <laughs> right. but before then, it's just going to knock along. And they taught me an awful lot of things. They taught me about cultural background and cultural foreground. And I'm in the cultural background now. I was in the foreground briefly 
in order to sound a certain note and to draw uh, the abduction experiences and the close encounter experiences into consciousness, into people's consciousness, which I did. Uh, since then, I have been retreated into the cultural background, and I'm in, I'm, 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 a, I'm in deep backstory now. Uh, this book is deep background, and it's, it's their call. I've done what I was asked to do, and I've done it correctly. The book is a correct, it is done right. It will provide the grounding needed for the intellectual community if they come forward. If the visitors come forward. So now they can if they want to, and it's up to them. I don't even think about whether or not they will. It's not my business. Well, the book is very tricksterish in many ways because it never it, – it's very mercurial. It, it, it doesn't come down firmly here or there. And when it does, it's to illustrate that it shouldn't be here or shouldn't be there. And that to yeah. me is very liminal and very tricksterish. And I think the mechanism of – you know, the trickster archetype and culture um, is a catalyst for change. It topples, um, you know, old outmoded uh, cultural structures, um, in, 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 in entrenched power uh, structures and, and that sort of thing. And that's what I really liked about the book is that it keeps you on your toes. It makes you always second guess and question everything that you have preconceptions about when right. it comes to this subject. And, and that, I think that's invaluable for people. It makes people do exactly what they don't like doing. Annie was quite right. She used to call me a trickster coyote, and that's exactly what I am. I am a coyote, and I'm a real trickster. It much, goes much deeper than you may imagine. Uh, as I say, I didn't, I didn't write this uh, in hopes of making a bestseller. I, I wrote this in hopes of making ground for us to stand on if the visitors meet us uh, a little bit down the road, as I think they very well may. Whitley Streber, I know our listeners are going to want to find more of your information. I guess they could just Google you. My latest activity, I went to a UFO conference. I got my car spat on. Otherwise, Ew. it was very nice. Uh, and, uh, I, uh, I work on my website, unknowncountry.com. And uh, that's about it. I'm out of business as a writer. No publisher will take me anymore. I'm finished. I have hunters coming up in the spring. If people by some miracle decide to buy the Alien Hunter books because of that, I might be able to continue publishing books. But Publishers Weekly didn't review Supernatural because they couldn't give it a bad review because one of the authors is one of the most distinguished professors of – in, in, in the field of mythology in the world, so they didn't review it at all. Instead, they dumped on uh, my next Alien Hunter novel in its ridiculous, painfully condescending lie of a review. And that will keep happening. You know, Whitley Strieber is there to be bullied. He was a liter He's a literary fraud, so we can kick him around. And believe me, practically everybody behind a pen is in one way or another a bully. And don't think it's different. It is. There's a lot of big egos out there. We hope we haven't bullied you on this uh, Not at all. Show. No, it's been a good interview. On the contrary, I mean, I say behind, I met a media pen. I, sh I should have added that word. And I knew as I was saying, I don't mean everybody. I mean, but if you're writing reviews for a magazine instead of writing books, you're frustrated, right? They won't give you a book deal. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, let me tell our listeners, you can find us on Twitter, where we're known as The Paracast. Please look for The Paracast on Twitter. I'll spend a moment telling you about our credits, because we need all the help we can get. We're still here. And that is, if you can find us on Facebook, if you look for The Paracast Fan Club, we have two of them. Choose one or the other. Take your choices. Either one's fine with me. We also have our second radio show called After The Paracast. Go to plus.theparacast.com. Once again, that's plus.theparacast.com. And what's it all about? Well, we have the After the Paracast podcast, which includes, of course, the wrap-up for this show sometimes, or special guests, continuing interviews, lots of unpredictability. We have the ad-free version of this show. And what this means is we take out 41 minutes of network ads, and we also give you slightly better audio quality. So that's one of the reasons for the premium. We also give you show transcripts. 
We also give you videos. We're just starting with those. Go to plus.theparacast.com. It's not expensive. It's a modest monthly, annual, five-year, even a lifetime subscription rate. And those who think after my flu that I would not be around much longer, I'm still here, and I hope to still be here for a long time to come to find out more. Plus.theparacast.com, plus.theparacast.com. Again, the book is The Supernatural. Co-author is Whitley Strieber. Whitley, it's been too long, and I hope we have you back again real soon. Thanks for joining us on the Paracast, sir. Thank you very much. The Paracast, featuring Gene Steinberg and Christopher O'Brien, is a copyrighted presentation of Making the Impossible Incorporated. Tune in next week for a new adventure in... The Paracast. <laughs>